Last time we were in North America at Sebring. This time we've come over to Italy for round number three of the Virtual Racing School GTI Racing World Championship Series brought to you here on Racebot TV and iRacing Live. We'll be right back after this short message. Team racing allows multiple iRacing members to team up and race together just like in real world endurance series. Teammates can share driving duties, spot for one another, or be a crew chief. Team racing is free both to join a team and to create one. Each teammate races on his or her own computer from wherever they want to. Your teammates can be anywhere in the world and changing drivers mid-race is as easy as a click of a button. Our racing features team endurance events ranging from just a couple of hours to 24 hours in length. So, if you fancy taking part in an iRacing endurance race in the future, you can learn more about team racing on the Teams page on the member website. Welcome along to round three of the VRS GTI Racing World Championship Series here from Autodromo Nacional Monza. And well, outside of North America, this is the Cathedral of Speed and uh, the traditional home of the Italian Grand Prix. But today it's team racing. It is endurance racing three hours around Monza. And what an exciting, interesting race has proved, hopefully proved to be Really interesting dynamic around this track of the different cars, and we'll be talking about those very shortly. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Paul Smith. Alongside me is Conrad Maddock and Randy Cheneth with Hugo Lewis on the cameras here. Just a quick thanks to Isfan Below, trackcams22.com, the overlay design, which is Andre, Andres Werner, and Simon Grossen, the uh, development of the uh, ATVO products that we use for our graphics and uh, live timing, of course, brought to you by the help of Nick Thiessen. And well, gentlemen, we'll start with you, Connery. After the first two rounds, we've got a tied championship at the top. Yes, we do. It's FA Racing G2 Logitech, Logitech G being tied up with Pure Racing Team Red at the top of the championship standings. Currently qualifying is underway, most of your teams and drivers on their first laps right now, but it's Monza, it's such a historic racing circuit, and because of its very nature of you being on that 100% throttle for the vast majority of the lap, it can throw up a few surprises. Absolutely, just looking at those championship standings as well. TTL Esports, our other race winners from round one at Bathurst, they are in fourth place just behind Core Sim Racing. Black really close between those two with VRS Quanda Sim Spot number eight in fifth place. So it's that top five really that are really going to be maybe positioning themselves, Randy, for the championship as we go on. That's really what we're looking at. Definitely. Thing is with TTL Esports is while they had a very good run at Bathurst, they were sort of mediocre at best, I would say, at the second round at Sebring. They had good practice pace in the warm-up. Let's see what they can do in qualifying. Josh Rogers is definitely the heavy hitter at that team. Let's see if he can put something together. But with an extra little bit of ballast for the Audi here at Monza, they might struggle once again. Uh, well, conditions here today. It's overcast, 29 degrees is the air temperature same as the track temperature with winds coming out the northeast at eight kilometers an hour so not the most difficult conditions here connery for these drivers to contend with and tire life will be a little bit better and you would imagine that you're going to see most teams double stint the tires here today yeah, I think so. We had a little bit of a discussion before the broadcast whether, whether we'll be seeing some teams take the dive and perhaps uh, go no stops at all throughout this entire race, but uh, we don't think that's going to happen with the tire wear that, the way it has been uh, with these GT3 machines. So I think most of your cars will be on, to, on the uh, double stint strategy today in terms of the tires. And we've also got uh, some bounce performance tweaks to talk about, especially with that Audi with the 40 kilogram ballast that it has. Apparently there are some rumors that it may not even make the error on fuel. Well, I mean, this is it. I was just going to bring the subject onto that, uh, Randy, because 
as we say, big weight penalty for the Audi, 40 kilograms. The McLaren and the Mercedes getting five kilograms each as well. So uh, iRacing doing the, trying to do their best to just balance out the performance of these cars as we're going into the, the meat of the season here. Definitely trying. Things look like they may be getting closer and closer, but we're still waiting on a number of course uh, drivers to put in lap times. And well, while well, drivers from the Audis, there's been a complaint from the ballast. You know, there's a lot of rumors, like Connery has said, with the extra weight may make it difficult for them to hit the hour here. They might have to do some fuel saving. Right now on qualifying trim, the four rings still very, very strong. Right now, Vera's Grand Assist Board are on pole. TTL Esports not far behind that. Then you get a Ferrari, and then you get another Audi. So a lot of Audis still out of the running point in the field. But things are looking a little bit closer than what we've seen in the first two rounds. There's no other way to say it. It's been an Audi series that's pretty much dominated by them. Well, let's, uh, whilst qualifying is going on, let's just talk about the venue then. Monza, it is a unique track. It's, um, some would think it's easy, but it's not easy, Connery, uh, around this track. You've got to do your best to stay in the slipstream of the car in front to carry as much speed as you can, but you've got some really heavy braking zones, and you're going to be running next to no, if in fact you do bother running any wing on this car today. So these guys are going to be pushing the adhesion on the track to the limit and through parts like the uh, Della Roggia and uh, the Retifilio, places like that, cars are going to be uh, maybe a little bit squirrely on the, on corner exit. Yeah, I think this is going to be a much more uh, of a tactical race than we have seen so far this season. I say that uh, just as Enex Racing Blue uh, decides to get themselves pole position. So uh, McLaren's uh, straight line speed really working well uh, for Justin Brunner and his team right now. But uh, returning back to the point, I think this race is going to be much more tactical. You'll be seeing a lot of fuel saving, especially from the, uh, from the Audi to try and make that hour mark. But if, if some of those Audi teams find out that they can't make the hour mark, they're going to go very, very aggressive with the stops. Um, and re well, yeah, we could touch on the, the strategy as well here, Randy, because if you're in second, third, if you're in a queue of cars, uh, you, may be not te you may be tempted to do sort of the oval approach and just sit behind the car in front of you. I mean, that's pretty much going to be the, the best thing that you can do, because the main thing is it's going to be like a Daytona 24, you know, when we typically see that broadcast at the beginning of the year, you're going to want to see teams and drivers. You're going to be relatively patient with the slipstream. You might be running 6th, 7th, 8th in line, but if you're in one long train of cars, there's no point in you trying to immediately jump the driver in front of you on the track and potentially leave that slipstream of the cars in front. So expect drivers, I think, to be very patient with one another. You want to try to work that slipstream as best to, that you can and try to, one, save fuel, and two, keep taps with the other teams that are out in front of you because the slipstream it can really be a, a bit of a talent let's just say equalizer here you know they generally say that rain and uh, inclement weather tends to be the great equalizer in motorsports well at a place like Monza is usually the draft well just looking at the qualifying at the moment and uh, the championship leaders well, uh, well, let's have a look here because FA Racing G2 Logitech are in ninth place at the moment. In fact, drop them down to tenth place as uh, NX now are uh, hook is basically uh, dominating the uh, front row at the moment. But where on earth is Pure Racing Team Red on uh, on qualifying? I can't see them myself, but um, they've not set a time yet. Do they really need to uh, get a shift on here, Connery? They've got six and a half minutes, so uh, it's not panic, t panic stations yet, but they do need to get there. Through Ascari right now. Yeah, they are coming through Ascari right now. So Maximilian Bonecke, the highest rated uh, road R rating driver on the, entire of the, on the entirety of the R rating service, looking uh, to get his qualifying lap in here. I'm not entirely sure if this is actually a lap for him because uh, he did mess up uh, his first lap in qualifying. It was not counted, so I expect him to come across the line and start his final flying lap in just a couple moments' time when he heads his way out of the Curva Parabolica. But one team I am very impressed with right now is the team of the number 94, VRS Trans Tasman Racing, P number four. And this is a team that hasn't gotten itself a top 10 so far this season. Well, Pure Racing Team Red do set a lap time. It's a 1.45.7, so that moves them up to ninth place ahead of their uh, championship, joint championship leaders in this one. One thing to uh, mention as well is that we have lost the Hosenwald Core Motorsports team uh, name from this. It's just Team 33, 
uh, from uh, for the time being until we find out what oh, happens here. Team. Well, it's just team on our graphics, absolutely. Um, but uh, you know, Randy, once again, we've seen shakeups of teams into an endurance series. Yeah, with it's become kind of a standard here, especially for this endurance racing sort of format. And, uh, some of these esports teams have come in. We still don't know where that Husenfeld team uh, motorsports group has gone, but it's. I don't know. It, it's got to be interesting. One thing I'm surprised, and we saw this from Core when all the uh, drivers made a mass exodus from there and went over there to uh, FAG2. I'm not really sure what what the long delay is in terms of a uh, an announcement coming from wherever they went is because I, I don't understand the logic. It's been you know we're coming up on a month since that Neo 24 Hours of Le Mans, which they won, and then pretty much the announcement came out that all the drivers were leaving. So it's sort of like, okay, where in the world have you gone? And what's taking so long? Just get it out. We all want to know. Yep, we do want to know. Uh, it's, uh, it, 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 it's, in, it's intriguing. And it's part of the, the politics of, um, of sim racing. It's almost like um, it, we're almost heading towards the territory of uh, heading down towards a, a sort of Formula One approach here, Connery, with uh, with how t drivers are sort of positioning themselves, trying to get themselves into uh, the best team they can for themselves. It is, and it does make our uh, our jobs uh, a little bit more difficult because uh, we hear some things from some drivers and hear other things from other drivers. So there's a lot of smoke and mirrors going on uh, as to where these drivers might be going. But uh, from what I heard, it might just be a new team as well. Uh, so that is one to look out for. You've got the likes of uh, Team LDLC and make their presence uh, known in the sim on the sim racing side of things. Of course, they're a big team in other esports. They managed to pick up Patrick Holtzman. So either they're going to pick up a couple more drivers or we might see a new face as well. Well, we're down into the final three and a half minutes of qualifying here. So we'll uh, just pay our attention to this at the moment then. So it's uh, Simicube, Inex, Racing Blue are in pole position provisionally at the moment. And of course, in Racing Black by uh, nine hundredths of a second ahead of the uh, Inex Racing Red Car in third place with VRS Quanda Simsport in fourth. Most drivers have completed their laps here. We've just got the odd one or two out on track still, just trying to improve the times. And really, qualifying round here, Randy, how, how important is it to, to get a good qualifying position for the start of this race? I think this is probably the most important qualifying of the entire season because first thing first, it's one of the shorter tracks. And with the way the slipstream works, it is very difficult to jump your way forward. It's not one of those tracks where you can kind of have a piss poor qualifying and then talent your way up the field based on speed. Because of the draft, because of the slipstream, because you're going to see packs of cars, it makes things very, very difficult with moving your way up. And on top of that, you're going to be needing to save fuel just a little bit when you want to go as far as you can on these first two stints to have as short of a third stop as you can. You need to ensure that you hit the hour, and it's hard to make your way up a field while fuel saving. And there could be some pitch strategy that comes into play in that regard, but I honestly think that in terms of all the tracks that we have, this is the most important to qualify well on, and oh yeah, you can't forget about that first chicane as well. It's always nice to be in the first few cars going through that chicane rather than being the 50th car that's going to run through it. I, I did a sprint, ra a few sprint races around here a couple of weeks ago in, a, in the GT3s, and uh, going into that Turn 1 chicane is... Um, yeah, you, you take a breath in and then come to a complete stop if you're near the back. So that's uh, that's what can happen. Then if you have our sort of luck, you end up facing the wrong way. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, that's for sure. But uh, Connor, you know, what what are the things that you're you're looking at for this race? What are the, the things that you're uh, really looking forward to with this event today? Yeah, the first lap is going to be absolutely crucial. We were just talking about that first chicane and how sketchy it can be coming down through there. We had that big instant at the start of the Sebring race at the back of the field, so it could potentially be history repeating itself down into there. But uh, once drivers get themselves sorted out, uh, starting to uh, you know calm down, go single file uh, over the uh, next couple of laps after the start, that's when we'll see the uh, the fuel strategy start to come in with drivers not perhaps not going for moves that are entirely obvious on th on first look. And, uh, well, we're looking at the lap times here. And, uh, Randy, you've made a very astute observation to us. You've just pointed it out to us on our chat. And, uh, yeah, it's a rather close gap of field here today, isn't it? 
It's a little bit competitive. It's it's the entire of the field right now is gapped by less than a second. Currently, pole as 30 seconds counts down is 45.5. That's Sydney Cuban X Racing Blue. And the last car on track that's done a lap is Euphoria Racing GT. They're currently scored 46. They did a 46.459. So under a second, gapping the entire field. And let's be honest, we don't ever see that in qualifying here when you think about the fact that the BMWs have never had good pace here in the past. Guys have somehow, some way, found some speed. Maybe the weather's helping out some of those slower cars, but in terms of balance of performance, doesn't seem like there's very much in it right now. I think this is going to be a good three hours. Yeah, we're going to have a very good three hours indeed, so why don't we take you through your starting grid here today. And, well, it is Simicube in X Racing Blue on pole position, ahead of course in Racing Black in second place. And uh, third place then for Simicube in X Racing Red. It's a really good day and qualifying for NX team. VRS Quantum Sim Spot in fourth place with VRS Trans Tasman Racing. Great result for them in qualifying in fifth with TTL Esports in sixth place. Your winners from round number one. Team 33 in the Mercedes are in seventh place with VRS Quanda Sim Spot number one in eighth. Odox Mud Sports, they're in ninth place with Pure Racing Team Red, your joint championship leaders in 10th place. Further down, Dream Factory 11th with Jim Racing GTR Center Pink in 12th with Jim Racing GTR Center Yellow in 13th. And your other joint championship leaders, FA Racing G2 Logitech G in 14th place with Esther Racing Team. We've seen how they've moved through in races in the first two rounds. 15th with Odox Motorsport Samsung Pro in 16th. Thrustmaster Mavano Red 17th with Pure Racing Team Black in 18th place. 19th for the number 18 VRS Cut on the Sim Spot car. And 20th for Jim Racing GTR Centre White. The rest of your field coming up on screen then. And uh, Randy, it's a bit of a mixed up one. We're used to seeing a couple other teams up there at the front. But uh, this one, it's going to be an interesting one. And uh, Inex are looking in a very strong position here for the race. Definitely are. I think this is the best qualifying we've seen from NX in a while. Uh, I think probably from season one of this championship when they had three of their cars, all three of their cars uh, sweep the podium at the six hour spa race. I don't think we've seen NX quite qualify this well. So for them having two cars in the top three is phenomenal. Beers Quinn is since Ford's also representing better. I think this is the best kind of uh, cumulative qualifying from them. You have that one car in fourth that's put on the grid by Mitchell De Jong and then Marcus Lenderman put that number one VRS Quinta Sport Audi in the eighth position. That's, I think, the best there. So there's some interesting teams out at the front, some different and interesting dynamics. And now we just got to set the field, get ready for three hours and prepare for that first chicane. Will we all make it through or are we going to have some dramas there early on the opening lap? And Connery then, the key to this race, get a good first lap and just settle yourself down for the strategy. Yeah, exactly. It's what, uh, well, at least Justin Brunner has to be thinking about uh, in that pole position there. Just try and get out, get away. You know, you have better fuel mileage than the Audis uh, by being in that McLaren. you got to use that to your advantage. Well, as the drivers head on behind the iRacing pace car, heading down towards the Parabolica, and uh, we're getting all set for the start of three hours of racing around Monza here. And uh, certainly going to be a good race. Drivers waiting patiently for the pace car to pull off to the right-hand side into the pit lane. And then it'll be Justin Brunner who will take this field to the start in round number three of the Virtual Racing School GT iRacing World Championship Series here on iRacing Live and Racebot TV. Waiting for the green light. The green flag doesn't drop yet. It's down the line. And now the green flag comes out. Away we go then. Three hours underway here at Monza. As they head down towards the Retifilio to start with. They're going three, four wide. Further down your field. Hopefully everyone gets themselves sorted out as they're heading to turn number one now. This first chicane. So easy to make contact around here. And we've got a car spawn. Car spun and we've got multiple cars crashing into each other. We were fearing that this would happen PRT here. PRT Red is one of them. And oh yeah, P Pure Racing Team in the wall there. That's your championship leaders in the wall. They're having to wait for everybody to go by before they can set off here. So there's still carnage going on further down your field. But at the front then, great start from Inex Racing Blue taking the lead here. 
Justin Brunner, second place for that Coanda Simsport 8 car. Of course, Sim Racing Black dropping down from the start down to third place. And the Inex Racing Red in fourth with TTL Esports, Joshua Rogers in fifth place as they go through the second Lesmo down towards the Ascari chicane for the first time. Well, turn one, we feared that it would happen, and it did happen. Blackstar Racing, they're already taking a tour back to the pits. They're going to be out of this race straight away here, down to the Ascari chicane. First lap of this uh, event. And uh, the action packed all the way through. Maximil Beneke at the back of the field, just uh, trying to get back up to running and uh, trying to recover anything out of this race but the damage to that car will be affecting his top speed throughout this race and his fuel and everything else tire wear as they head on through end of the first lap then it is in it racing red and uh, racing blue sorry in first place second place for vrs quantum sim spot number eight of course in racing black in third that's the top three of this race as they head down towards the first chicane once again randy they're already doing it. Fuel saving from that VRS Command and Simsport number eight car. Mitchell DeYoung lifted about 200 meters early going into that first braking zone. But I took a look at that first incident on the replays and I have to question Jesus Cecilia behind the wheel of that Odox Motorsport car. He's the one who got into your championship leader, that Peter Racing Team red car. And it didn't even happen to the chicane. It happened after the chicane. They were stacked up and Jesus pretty much just kept his foot in it and flat out no other way to say it. Turned back to Neke and Peter Racing Team red car. Hasty Cecilia's driving standards have been called into question in the past, and as far as I'm concerned, he just dumped one of the championship leaders. The second time we've seen him do that in uh, the VRS GT iRacing World Championship competition, also had a run-in with Coanda at Brands Hatch a couple seasons ago. So for Hasty Cecilia, I think he needs to take the blinders off and start thinking about these as three-hour races sometimes. Yeah. Too. Yeah, we saw the replay there. He just got up into the back of that Pure Racing Team red car and lifted the back wheels off the track. That's what spun it round. And it's almost as if he didn't let off the uh, the throttle on the exit, as we see also on that replay of the other instant further back there. A set of various cars getting involved in that one. And there were still shenanigans going on as they headed out. But there you can see that Pure Racing Team red car stuck in the gravel trap. And uh, that was it. It's it. Day compromised straight away. But Connery opening lap. We've seen some drama. And this has thrown the championship wide open here. And uh, FA Racing G2, the uh, core leaders in the championship, on the 12th place. Th uh, yeah, 12th place at the moment. But they're going to be uh, maybe thinking of the, uh, the slipstream and getting the uh, fuel saving done. Yeah, dare we say, huge championship implications, maybe, as actually Beneke's gone around again. He's gone around again in the Parabolica, contact with another car there. That was of the Evolution Racing Team 27 there, trying to wrestle the inside line away was Beneke, but there was door-to-door -door contact and Beneke's around again. Yeah, well, look at the replay there. Beneke down the inside, a little tap on the inside, around he goes at the Parabolica. Maybe pushing a little bit too hard there, Connery, to try and uh, gain some positions back, but it's turned out worse for them. Yeah, it has. So this is going to be hugely on the back foot now for Pure Racing Team Red. I don't know if you can recover all that much from this race now. He has to really, really put the work in. It certainly does. And, uh, well, back to live action then on the screen. And it's your leaders coming out of the second Lesmo then. And uh, it's a group of four. They've seemed to have made a little bit of a breakaway from the Inex Racing uh, red car. DTL Esports at the back of that one down to fourth place in this one. So they've made that move on this lap as Joshua Rogers. He made it down towards turn number one. Don't forget li uh, live scoring and timing is available just visit racebot.tv forward slash timing to keep up to date with everything that's going on in this race and also get social with us here at racebot you can uh, do that on uh, facebook facebook.com forward slash racebot tv and on twitter as well where we've got uh, jack styles running the uh, the social media for us today so uh, keep up to date with everything that's going on in various ways and uh, get interactive with us as well as we're heading towards turn number one once again, we're getting uh, almost just, just over five minutes of this race gone here. It's your leader still, Justin Brunner in that uh, Inex Racing Blue car. 
on the sim spot, second place Mitchell De Jong. We saw De Jong, uh, uh, Brandy, in that uh, Sebring race have to work his way through that contra strategy, and it worked so well here today. You wouldn't imagine him doing any contra strategy with him being so far up the field. Uh, so the worst thing you could do here to race like Monza is overthink it. I think you need to do things pretty much by the book, as simple as you can. Uh, if you're going to do the double stint, maybe save it for the middle stint, because that's the really big thing for that Coanda car. As we know that Mitchell tends to have phenomenal pace, but it's sort of the second driver we've seen that uh, that car kind of struggle with just a little bit. We saw them go with that at Sebring, where they put a driver in for the middle stint, and then uh, Mitchell basically went flying through the field later on in the race. and didn't quite pan out the way they would have wanted but still ended up quite good for them because of that they're still sort of in it for the championship hunt they also ran an interesting strategy at a bathroom so they're the only team to attempt the triple stand we got a big incident for third place third in place running car ricardo castellato he gets sent around in a scary not sure what caused this he just got sideways on the entrance we know you're going to be trimming the wings out here at monza and well josh rogers pretty much had nowhere to go and he absolutely drilled that core black machine yeah, look at it on replay then. He got squirrel eight, lost control, and Josh Rogers had nowhere to go, really. And bang, into the back of Castroledo. A lot of damage to the back of that Audi there for uh, Corsin Racing Black, and he had to be so patient. And now he's only just got going again out of the exit of Ascari. So, uh, absolute nightmare for uh, Castroledo after qualifying so well in this race here, Connery. And uh, that's just seen them drop right to the back of the field here in this one, uh, right down to 44th uh, behind Max Beneke in the uh, Pure Racing Team red car. And you know which team is absolutely laughing right now. That's going to be VRS Coanda Simsport number eight because, uh, well, you basically had most of your championship contenders have multiple issues during the course of this race. You had PRT Red have those issues early on. You've now had Course in Racing Black and TTL Esports get themselves involved in an incident. You've had FA Racing G2 have a horrible qualifying. Things are looking very, very good for, for Coanda this early on. Certainly is. Your two leaders, though, they've got a bit of a break on now. Two and a half seconds between second and third place. So uh, those two, they just need to work together and pull forward and get that gap out front uh, to really make any uh, any strategy work here and to give themselves a little bit of leeway as well. But then you've got the pack behind them then, third down, and it's all the way down to about 15th place, just in a queue here. And uh, interested to see one of those BMWs in there, the uh, Jim Racing GTR Centre yellow car. So uh, obviously the BMW not struggling quite as much as we would have imagined in this event here today, Randy. Certainly isn't. They seem to have found some top speed, and that's, you know, through the first two seasons of this championship here at Monza, we've seen the BMWs typically struggle. So for someone like Jim Racing to have one of them in the top 10 and the second one running in 11th and the third one running in 15th, they have found some speed in that front engine car. And you also have another BMW in the mix as well, Tommaso Carla in the Mavana Red. So someone somehow has figured out how to make this car quick around Monza, and I think the teams running it are going to be very, very happy about that. As far as Mercedes, go let's take a look at some of the other manufacturers right now there's one of them that's running in the top six that's that x Houston filled core motorsports car that's now just team 33 or team because hashtags break our overlays uh he's running in that sixth position ferraris are doing decently as well as well there's one of them currently sitting in third but the ferraris and the mercedes are kind of the underrepresented manufacturer in this championship and you got to go all the way back to 23rd to find that next ferrari that's jared phil self and the vrs trans tasman racing machine but they've gotten into some drama and there's heavy damage on the front of that ferrari yeah, certainly is, and uh, well, they did qualify further up the field. They did qualify in fifth, so uh, they've had dramas, as you say. Got caught up in that Ascari chicane instant, I don't believe, and that's what's dropped them down a little bit. TTR, in fact, had a spin at turn number one on that one. So, uh, yeah, that was what. Oh, yes, of course, that's what the um, the uh, new racing team car was avoiding at the start then, and. Uh, that's what caused all sorts of shenanigans going on. So uh, TTL not having the best of starts to this race. Very early into this race, just 10 minutes into this one here as they're heading down to the Parabolica once again. Your two leaders sticking close together. But I tell you what, Jack Sedgwick has actually been closing up a little bit here, Conrad, on this lap. 
uh, because it was about 2.3 seconds was the gap between second and third. It's now down to just under 1.8 seconds. Yep, it is. And we'll perhaps see a uh, representation of that as they head their way across the line. Yes, it's a 47.4 for NX Racing Red compared to a 47.8 and a 47.9 uh, for your two race leaders right now. So we can expect that NX, NX Racing Red car to just lock onto the back of the leading pair and make this a three-car scrap for the race lead at this moment in time. And we'll just see if uh, the likes of the Coanda number one car, the likes of TTL Esports and, of course, Team 33, if they can also lock onto the back and not let that leading pair get away. Well, the thing is here, uh, Randy, is that, okay, Jack Centric is closed up to those leaders, but he's bringing everyone along with him, isn't he? That's the thing. He's giving that bridge. But as we've got side-by-side -side action between Pure Racing Team Black and Esther, and Esther, have actually, I believe, has just made the position on them. So that's a change of positions for Pure Racing Team Black and for Esther with Marin Cholak. Once again, having a good start to the race. Not the best qualifying, but a good start. But as I say... That uh, NX Racing Red car is actually bridging the gap and giving those behind a slipstream to pull themselves forward and bring the pack back into this race here. Jack Cedric's pace is simply phenomenal right now. The fact that he's out there running half a second quicker than those leaders without a slipstream is quite impressive. Now, granted, we know that Mitchell De Jong in that Coanda number eight is fuel saving hard. Uh, everyone else behind doesn't seem to be doing much the same whatsoever. And Jack Cedric is certainly flying that flag of, you know what, we're just going to uh, basically put our foot down and run this as quickly as we can. So I'm trying to get that Italian manufacturer up in front here at the Italian racing course and uh, the most famous Italian racing course for sure. Certainly trying his hardest. Let's see what happens this time through. Seven for the leaders. Jeff Cedric's going to go to a 47-2. So still reeling him in by about half a second every single time they go around this place. Just super rapid there from that number 10 machine that's going to keep NX Racing Red. All only thing I have to think of is driving like this without the slipstream currently has not yet caught them. Is what's this going to do for his fuel numbers through this first stint? Well, this is it. We uh, we know definitely the Audi is going to be heat fuel saving heavily, which is why that second place car is just sat parked on the rear bumper of that uh, NX Racing blue car of your race leader. But uh, that Ferrari is uh, it's it's not really been that um, that much of a uh, a runner in this uh, championship so far this season in the first two rounds. But here, it just seems to suit that car. It does have a, uh, a relatively good top speed. Uh, Connery does that Ferrari, and Jack Sedgwick is just getting the most out of this car, using every inch and a little bit more of the track here today. Yeah, he is, and well, that Ferrari, you did say it, it does have uh, quite a good straight line, a good amount of straight line speed, and it also doesn't, isn't suffering with the, uh, the ballast issues that the Audis have to deal with. Uh, so that car is going to be lighter than these Audis, going to have a little bit more straight line speed as well. So uh, it could be looking good for those Ferrari teams in the field right now. Simi QB next racing red is one of them, but you do have to go back quite far to find others because they've been involved uh, in incidents over the course of this race. The likes of VRS Trans Tasman Racing uh, down the field there in a Ferrari is actually there's a little bit of a battle around them. That's Odox Motorsport Samson and Radicals Online just having a bit of a scrap coming off the Ascari chicane. That is for P number 24. Five overall. Yep, so battling throughout the field, there's also uh, Esther is not getting away from Pure Racing Team Black and uh, Damien McPhee putting the pressure on. They've dropped back from the, the cars in front, so it's, uh, the first 11 are pretty much all together, and in fact, we've got a little bit side by side the Team 33 car uh, and Dream Factory as well. Sorry, is making moves on Odox Mott Spots, Hazel Cecilia. Uh, so uh, a little bit of change of positions further down. Thrustmaster Mavano Red really on the back bumper of that pure racing team black car. And he's going to try and go the long way around in that BMW. And if he can hold that line here, he's going to have the inside line for the next chicane heading down. And do you know what? I think pure racing team there, Randy, have said, have the place. Oh, a little oh, bit of contact. No, they haven't. <laughs> 
Oh, they have it. So for Tommaso Carlo, he managed to just slip through, but Damian McPhee with that little bit of damage is, I think, struggling on the top speed. And while well, he made it very tight into that second chicane, didn't he? Through the first Lesmo, they're going to go. And now the downforce for that BMW is going to help out. And look, if you look at that, Tommaso Carlo has already stretched a little bit of a gap while out in front of them. Myron Kolak is doing a good job of stretching away from them as well. I think the top speed of that Audi is somewhat hindered. And now it's going to be Alex Arana in that gym racing BMW is going to have a go into the Ascari chicane, into the braking zone, and hard on the brakes, late on the brakes goes that BMW. He's going to be able to slip through. Damien McPhee had a little bit of overspeed through the Ascari chicane, but had to lift out of it. Couldn't carry the speed through it. That BMW was right in the way. The question I have, though, here, uh, Paul, is that if you do well, if you're right now Jack Sedgwick, that NX Racing Red Ferrari certainly seems like the best Ferrari here. If they win this race, they legally have to say Grazi, Grazi Ragazzi and Grande Machina, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's in the contract of every person who drives a Ferrari, isn't it, now? That you got to uh, say that. You'll lead us now. It's a three-car train. And uh, Jack Cedric has got right to the back of your two leaders now. Oh, we've got a car on the grass. That's a 92. And that's oh. TTL Esports. Oh, that was incredibly close. He almost wiped out your third-place car. Nailed it. I tell you oh. what. That is a, a change of underpants if I've ever seen one. I think he's just found out that uh, ad adrenaline is brown. TTL Esports, Joshua Rogers, he got a wheel on the grass, just suddenly got ducked out. I think he made, had a slight contact from behind, but was. oh, so close with uh, with Jack Cedric there. And it was the uh, Team 33 car, wasn't it, Connery, that just made the slightest of contact there. Yeah, as soon as I, as soon as I saw that TTL Esports car just break loose as a result of that tiniest of tiniest of bits of contact from Alexandra Voss. I saw the trajectory across the grass and I was just going, oh no, oh no, oh no. But he narrowly misses the Inex Racing red car. That, wow, I think we all need to take a breath. Yeah, that, uh, I mean, it's a great job to keep it out of everyone, but I think he uh, didn't have much choice Ooh, in the matter. Um, oh, no. And, uh, well... What's we might have the number technical three issues, car? yeah. What's no, the number the 10 car. Number 10 car, yeah, the third place car. And uh, second place. Yeah, the number 10 was third place. Maybe a little bit technical problems. We'll have to wait and see how this one pans out. We'll have to just call it as we are at the moment. See your leaders, as my timing screen is showing, is uh, NX Racing Blue, Justin Brunner in the lead in that McLaren. Second place for the VRS Quan of Simsport, Mitchell de Jong in the Audi. Third place now as they come across the line is Marcus Lenderman in the other VRS Quandersim spot Audi. Behind him is the Team 33 Mercedes Green Factory in fifth in the fourth one of the Mercedes and then Odox Motorsports in sixth place. And we're keeping an eye out to see the telltale sign of uh, technical problems. It's usually um, bit of choice language in chat is usually what it is there uh, Brandy but uh, yep there we go technical problems befalling that Inex car that's yeah that's definitely bad news uh for them and what talk I mean you want to talk about getting being the luckiest in the world and then getting the short end of this I mean you just you, you narrowly avoided getting drilled by that spinning Joshua Rogers and then you get on the wrong side of technical issues. That is, that is, I, I don't know. I don't think I've seen just a, a, such a swing in luck that's that heavily. That is, I feel so bad for them. What the uh, what the iRacing uh, gods giveth, the iRacing gods taketh away as well. Uh, as we're heading in towards uh, the end of 20 minutes of this race. I tell you what, this opening part of this race has just flown by. There's action all over. Cars are still relatively close together as well. Okay, two leaders are just out front by about uh, two seconds ahead of third place. Getting cars all just fighting themselves out into little... Um, it's a little sort of battle pack, really, out with Connery. And um, as we have a look at the uh, the Joshua Rogers incident once again, but um, yeah, you, you see these um, these little battle packs coming together, and uh, you see how as uh, we go, there we see it. But uh, Connery, you know these these little battle packs are forming now. The, the the slipstream is being broken in places, and now we're just getting groups of four or five cars all together on track. 
go. We got that leading pair. We've got what is it, also a pair for P3, P4, and then you've got uh, sort of the the mid pack battle, or rather the uh, in, just inside the top ten battle. You got Gene Factory, Odox Motorsports, uh, Gym Racing. You've got FA Racing G2 looking to make their way through the field. You've already, already gained a good couple of positions up from P number 14 up into P number eight, and quite a few more positions on the cards for them. Uh, if they can get uh, that car in gear. They've also got uh, Gym Racing GTS Center pink behind them as well. And uh, then you've got to look all, after that pack, you've got to look all the way back to P number 10, and that is TTL Esports. That car you saw take a trip through the grass acting like a lawnmower coming down to the Red Affiliate. As uh, we're heading down, looking, uh, as I say, at this, uh, this, this another pack here, that uh, TTL car. Joshua Rogers having to do a bit of a recovery drive, but he's now at the front of that little group. But he's, well, as uh, Baron Cholak goes past him, actually. He, uh, so uh, Joshua Rogers, 11th place at the moment. He was in the top three, or to battling for the top three, should I say, uh, when he had that uh, little moment. But they now drop back. They've dropped back from ninth place, so they're not going to have that slipstream of the cars in front to be able to work themselves forward. And this is where we see, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, Randy, this is where you see those, those little gaggles of cars forming now. And, uh, and this is where you'll see sort of like the different parts of the race come together as we go through today. And this is, I think, going to be where we see this first hour of the, this race. I mean, I think we're going to see it start to get relatively calm down here. They say that Merrick Golak, he's making quite the move around the outside, actually defending here from that Josh Rogers TTL car that's recovering after that spin at turn one where we, I mean, we do have this one long train of cars, but you want to start getting into a rhythm and get relatively smooth here and start moving your way forward that uh, based on pit strategy and based on saving fuel. Let's see if Josh Rogers, though, if he's going to make a move here on Marin Kolak. He's going to look up the inside, but no, he's going to pull out of it going into the second chicane. I think the move was on there. Not sure why he would do that, but he's going to sit through the second chicane and just run through the Lesmos. Certainly is. And, uh, well, these uh, these drivers, they're uh, really pushing themselves. They're really uh, fighting uh, with themselves. And the thing is, you could end up slow down, uh, slow slow everyone uh, uh, down, really, and uh, make yourself lose time on the cars behind. And uh, it's so easy to do that around here at this track. And uh, well, looking at your timing screens. Uh, which, by the way, you can check out bespot.tv forward slash timing to keep up to date with everything that's going on in this race. You'll see our leaders six tenths of a second between them, then the little gap to third and fourth, who've got three tenths of a second between them. And another little gap, fifth down to ninth, all covered by uh, about a second and a half there. There's quite a, a good ba a battle here between those cars but the thing is those guys they're just now i think they're settled into that groove now they're they're saying right we're in a good position do a bit of fuel saving look after the tires as well and uh, then they'll be able to make moves as behind the uh, bmw having a look on joshua rogers thrustmaster mavana side by side through the first chicane and that's going to open up the door to the other bmw jim racing the white car not able to make a move for the time being so they're all squabbling and all this squabbling here connery as i was saying slows each other down it makes you lose time yep it does and here comes the massacala around the outside this time coming down towards the della roja has to be so brave to make it around the outside there so instead just backs out of that one looks for the run through the corner instead but is not able to get it so that TCL Esports car definitely suffering in terms of the straight line speed, especially if you have what is the slowest car in the straight line uh, behind you, two of them trying to overtake on the straights. I, uh, I'm, I'm going to bring up the fact that I've raced here a couple of weeks ago again, uh, but I was in the BMW. It's not actually that slow. If you've got your rear wing trimmed right out and you've got your, uh, your, your set up right in terms of making the car as slick as possible, it's only a couple of kilometers an hour slower now uh, because it's got the drive out the corners and it can carry more speed through corners because of its aerodynamic advantage here. Well, were you running in like a, a rookie league or something? Yeah, yeah. Was. <laughs> okay, well, that explains it. Definitely explains it. But no, the, the BMW, they've definitely made improvements on it. It is 
it is definitely better than what it used to be here but it still is somewhat disadvantaged and i'm sure this weather is somewhat helping it out as well it being nice and cold it can really push the limit with it uh, on the grip on this one but everything is sort of starting to calm down some fights you know we still have this long train of cars we have one from fifth back to about 10th and then we got that long train of cars kind of in the mid pack but really it's just an occasional pass here or there is actually pure racing team is looking to get done on nope that's data opcac was thinking about making a move on Jonas Wolmeyer, but opted to pull out of that that was another bmw but for the best part up and down the field everyone is just sort of relegating themselves to running single file despite how fast close, uh, how close the race currently is right now and how much competition there is up and down the field but meanwhile out in front I think the people who are really enjoying their gap are the race leaders of NX Racing Blue and Mitchell DeYoung in that coin to number eight car. Yeah, we just saw uh, we just saw the uh, thrust monster to be found on a red car, but they move into turn number one into the Retophilia. That's a position for them up to 11th place. Then Joshua Rogers in 12th. And I think um, another thing with that spin he had earlier on and they put a, a bunch of heat through the uh, through the rear wheel rear tires. Also take just a little bit of tread out of them as well. So um, won't quite have as long of tire life, but it won't be too bad uh, because he'll have been able to just cool those tires down back to the normal racing temperature after that uh, that uh, heart in mouth moment about five laps ago in this race. We are on lap 15 of this race. It is your race leaders in X Racing Blue, Justin Brunner in the McLaren. Ahead of VRS Quinder Simspot, second Mitchell De Jong, third place VRS Quinder Simspot, Marcus Lenderman with Team 30, Team 33, uh, Alexander Voss in fourth place, Dream Factory fifth with Odox Motorsports in sixth, Jim Racing Yellow in seventh with FA Racing G2 Logitech G in eighth place, Jim Racing Pink are in ninth with Esther Racing Team. Running out the top 10, and here comes another one of the BMWs. I tell you what, these BMWs, Conray, they're making moves down towards turn number one, and that's two BMWs making overtakes for two different positions. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic to see as it's the battle of the runs off of the Retrofilia chicane. And now, can Esther Racing Team make this pass back on the Mavano red car? It doesn't look like there's a, a lot that Chua can do about this one, so he's not move isn't going to be on coming down into the Della Roja. You've also got Jim Racing uh, White behind as well, looking very, very threatening. That BMW performing very, very well on the brakes, uh, which is kind of half the battle coming down into some of these heavy braking zones. And, uh, well, we've got TTL Esports on the back of this train as well. And uh, we've also got PRT Yellow, but uh, they haven't really been all that threatening. But uh, these BMWs, as you say, they have been making moves. Yeah, they certainly have. And uh, the thing is, they're now at the front of that pack here, Connery. And uh, they're cutting the hole in the air now for the others. So uh, I think they're going to come up against it now. And it's going to show the, the lack of top speed in that BMW here. Uh, now that that uh, Thrustmaster Mavano car is at the front of that little path. Yeah, exactly. So this is going to be a little bit tougher now for the BMWs. They don't have the slipstreams to be able to work with. As here comes Alex Arana with the uh, insane amount of overspeed coming down in towards the Parabolica, but doesn't decide to use it uh, to get past the Esta Racing Team at this moment in time. A little bit squirrely coming through the middle of the apex there, as the, all these uh, teams and drivers will take that characteristic wide exit of the Parabolica trying to keep as much momentum as possible coming down this pit straight but here comes Arana again for Jim Racing White I think this time he might decide to head his way down towards the inside unless he's going to save fuel no he's going to go down towards the inside battle of the late breakers between the Audi and the BMW BMW on the inside will get through pretty easily as oh that's easy Ali Sports almost ran into the back of Esther there yeah, it certainly did. The two Audis just seeming to be struggling a little bit there. And is this going to be a little bit of the tail of the tape here, Randy? With that extra weight penalty that they've been added on for the, uh, the balance performance here today, is that just maybe showing the differences? The BMW, no extra weight, whereas the Audi, 40 kilograms, just starting to show maybe? Might be. It'd be, you know, it's one of the things you have to talk about. We mentioned fuel consumption when regarding to the Audi and how that ballast may affect it, but tire wear is also something that we need to keep in mind and if that is going to be something that they kind of struggle with we're about midway through this run been about been racing for about 30 minutes now and that's definitely something we need to look at that said there's a lot of Audis they're still doing a good job maintaining good pace of course you have that Koenis Sport number eight with Mitchell DeYoung he's doing a good job 
keeping pace with Justin Brunner, but as I say that, um, Mitchell dropped quite a bit through the Ascari chicane compared to that McLaren. Then, of course, running in third, you also have the Audi of Marcus Lenderman, the second running Vieras coin to Sinsport car that Alexander Voss has latched onto the rear of. And then you have other cars, Jesus Cecilia, who, despite moving several cars out of the way, still runs in that sixth spot. And then you have that FAGT racing car of Seb Job, who's running in that eighth spot. So some Audis seem to be doing relatively okay with this. Others may be struggling a little bit on the tires. So the might be as um, looking at uh, where teams are in terms of uh, the championship standings and where they are in this race. Well, they've got the Pure Racing Team Red Car, 34th place, just coming around the Parabolic now. So really been uh, a really testing period for them. You can see the damage on the rear of the car as well. So that's going to be affecting their fuel consumption, the tyre wear. Simon Fiegel comes into pit road for the Evolution Racing Team, by the way. And uh, that's uh, a bit of damage to the front of the car, and he's missed his pit stall as well. So easy to do at this track. You come from such a high speed onto pit road, and you've got that slippery concrete surface there on the pit apron, Connery. Yep, you do, as I'm just trying to look to see where Evolution Racing Team managed to get that damage. It did seem that, that it was a good couple of laps to go, so uh, this can't really be a scheduled stop or, unless they're absolutely committing to what is a three-stop strategy here. Well, um, you, you never know, that's for sure. Looking at the uh, the other championship contenders here, the uh, the joint, other joint top um, top driver teams in the championship that uh, FA Racing G2 car is in ninth place at the moment as they're heading around the Ascari chicane half an hour into this race so far but look at the team that was in third place in the championship course in Racing Black where on earth are they after that uh, instant at the start they re well they're very retired yeah it was that instant at the uh, scourge chicane sorry that retired them out of this race so that's really going to dampen their uh, efforts here in ttl esports as well another team that was up there challenging the championship they've uh, dropped down because of that uh, instant turn number one they're down in 13th at the moment and well look at here the number eight car vrs quantum sim spot in a prime position second place mitchell de young and you just get the feeling here, Randy, that they're playing that long game here. They're looking at uh, looking at their strategy, looking at saving as much fuel and as much tyres as they can in this one. They're keeping that gap at half a second between themselves and your race leader, Justin Brunner. They're happy to just sit there, and I tell you what, they'll be uh, quids in for a good championship result if they manage to keep it here. Definitely seems to be the case, but I don't know. I'm still sort of on edge with that coin of Simsport number eight machine because they've tended to struggle when it comes to putting that other driver into that machine. We know that Mac Backham, who's likely going to be the driver who gets in, who's had a pretty stout running the last couple of weeks, won the Iris World Championship Grand Prix Series race at Montreal. Uh, so he's sort of on an upswing in that regard. But Mitchell de Jong has really become, in my opinion, the premier driver at Coanda in terms of his pace, not only in the uh, the McLaren in that F1 uh, championship, but you also have to think about uh, what he's been doing in Rallycross, and he's certainly been their best GT driver in this championship as well. So for right now, for Mitchell de Jong, he's making that team look very, very good at the moment, putting that car in a great position. Question has to be, whoever's going to be getting in for that other hour, will they be able to do the same? You look at uh, you look at just currently looking at the graphics of the movers and shakers radicals online. They've uh, they've piled up through the field. They're in 19th at the moment. They started. Where did they start? They started 41st. 41st. That is a that is a great achievement. And it's in that BMW as well, Connery. We were saying wasn't really fancy around here, but uh, quite a number of these BMWs. Okay, they've got. They've uh, come out good because of incidents that happened early on in this race, but you've got to be there to be able to uh, to do the moves, and uh, they're up there. A ton of positions gained at the start here. 21 positions, Bullets gained. Yeah, it's an absolutely brilliant effort for them, and they're, they're still looking at the amount of traffic ahead of them. Still lots more positions potentially on the cards there uh, for Radicals Online. Currently Wyatt Gooden behind the wheel of that one. It's good two cars ahead get very, very close coming off the Retafilio. This is Mario Bertolotti here 
for the Gym Racing Azuri team and Jonas Wormeyer for PRT Blue. PRT Blue looking very aggressive down towards the inside for the Della Roja. Let's see if he's able to make this move. He's going to have the outside for the second apex, but manages to squeak his way through. Here comes Radicals online to pick themselves up yet another spot. If they can make it down the inside of the first Lesmo, and I think this lot is not really going to fight that one. Yeah, you don't really see that many moves happening to Lesmo 1, that's for sure. Through Lesmo 2 now, and that's moved that Radicals car up into 18th place in this race. The two places lost for Jim Racing Azuri. Mario Bettelotti, not the best of laps here, and uh, looking ahead now, that pure racing team blue car, Jonas Wallmeyer, he'll be happy to be at the front of the pack, but he won't be happy in terms of his strategy, so um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Wyatt couldn't make a move here, that uh, that, that uh, pure racing team car doesn't fight them off too much in this one. Everybody's settled down now, it appears, everyone's just got into their groove here around it this is now where everyone's starting to talk with the teammates talk with the spotter or the crew chief and look at the numbers and see right what numbers are we getting out of the car at the moment where will that get us to in terms of fuel and where do we need to be to maximize the strategy well that's definitely one of the things people are talking about but radical is continuing to move their way forward they're saying you know what Jonas Walmart I want to put you in the rearview mirror and they waste no time in doing so immediately go down on the inside of that first chicane and move them up into the 17th position now the question is going to be is how are they going to be doing without any slipstream out in front of them because they're going to be leading this pack and there's a couple things to keep in mind when you talk about strategy Paul we saw um Evolution Racing Team a season ago when they came here for the season opener round two. They had what is, in my opinion, the best race for that team on the world championship level. They had a couple of podium positions rounded out or close to coming up with a win, and they did it with an off strategy, making this race a three-stop race. Uh, and basically, in order to do that, you just don't feel safe whatsoever. You have to do a little bit of a short fill. You pit somewhere around. You generally want to push to the hour through this first stint because you can take the fuel on for free. And then you're going to do a shorter second stint and then basically end the race with a pretty uh, pretty short stop as well. You saw Evolution Racing Team do that in the season opener of season two of this championship. And it worked out. Well, that was somewhat warmer weather, so not sure if the same thing will uh, uh, be able to play it out. But the thing to talk about in terms of, of strategy here, Paul, that there's a lot of cars that have damage when you look up and down the field. You might see a crumpled front bumper. You might see a little bit of a crumpled rear wing. That's likely, not only will that be affecting some of these cars' top speed, more importantly, that's going to be affecting fuel economy. So when you talk about that pure racing team blue car of Jonas Wollmeyer that we just saw Wyatt Gooding get around, look at the right side of that rear wing. It is crumpled just a little bit. You're going to be looking at affected top speed and potentially affected fuel economy. That may mean that these guys cannot push to the hour and it may force them into turning this into a three-stop race. Uh, speaking of Evolution Racing Team, Simone Maria Marcella is on pit road at the moment and he's been sat there for about a minute and ten. That's usually about the time for a full stint, but uh, they're not, they're going to be carrying on sitting there. So they're uh, obviously getting repairs done to their car here today. And uh, it's been an absolute disaster for Evolution Racing Team because the 28 car is sat on pit road as well. So those two cars down on pit road at the moment. Their other car, the 27 car, is in 35th place as well with the 30 car in 29th so four cars in this uh, race with the Russian racing team here Connery and uh, I tell you what Bretton O'Brien will not be a happy man today yeah he won't be happy at all especially with uh, how things have been going for him and his team and of course his countrymen as well so uh, we'll see what happens with that one as actually a saw a team actually uh, that was actually okay I just saw one of the uh, GTR center the gym racing GTR center cars have a couple of issues but they seem to have managed to get that sorted out so it's actually uh, looking back towards Simicube Enex and Esther and TTL Esports so this pack just outside of your top 10 uh, PJ Sturgis currently leading in that Enex Racing Yellow uh, BMW with Esther Racing in the Audi and TTL Esports in the Audi. There's a train of Audis apart from Jim, Jim Racing GTR Center Black behind. So it, it, it seems a bit surreal to me that these BMWs are currently leading these packs. That, that seems to be not natural. Well, I mean, you look at it in front of the um, in front of that uh, that Enex Yellow car. You've got Thrustmaster Mavano Red and uh, Jim White are uh, out front. 
uh, 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 pulled a gap over that uh, group as well. As in fact, your Jim P Pink car has had to make a pit stop there. It's obviously uh, issues for them and having to make a pit stop early in this one. 20 minutes remaining in this hour. So only 40 minutes into a stint, they've they've been having issues with uh, with their car. So they've uh, taken the car back to the pit. And uh, obviously going to do a little bit of a driver change there, and uh, hopefully try and work out some. Well, no, that's technical uh, issues. Yeah, it's technical issues for them. Not exactly sure what happened there, but there was definitely some issues there as he was going down the front straightaway. So, not sure what the problem is for Jim Pink, but also I think we've just had a change of position out near the front of the field with Alexander Voss in team number 33. He just got the move done on Marcus Lenderman, so move that car up into third, and Lenderman has fallen back quite a bit behind that Mercedes. So. Maybe starting to stretch the legs through the second half of the stint is that Mercedes. We're seeing the front engine cars. The BMWs are showing good pace deeper in the field. But the Mercedes are actually doing relatively well. I think about where we saw these cars running in the early parts of the season at Bathurst and, of course, at Sebring. We saw a good run from the Husingfeld Core Motorsports Group before the Bass Exodus. They were still part of the team at that point. Uh, they saw them have a decent run, but that Dream Factory car was kind of meh, and they definitely didn't have good runs at Bathurst either. Right now, looking at both of your Mercedes, currently running third and fifth on the racetrack. So, balance and performance definitely helping them out a big deal. Yeah, it certainly is helping them out a lot here today. And uh, it's always good to see Dream Factory doing so well in this series. Get these uh, mix-up of uh, teams in this race, and this is... We Connery, I know you, you mentioned it on social media, I believe it was yesterday, saying that Monza, it always seems to mix things up a little bit here with the way this track is, and it's certainly providing that today. Yeah, it is. We've seen drivers uh, and teams get themselves nearer the front of the field, whereas in previous races, they've been uh, solely in that mid-pack area, and... Uh, well, that's just what's happened to the likes of Inex Racing Blue, which have been, still been competitive in that McLaren over the past couple of rounds, but uh, they haven't found themselves at the front in those races. But because it's Monza, because it's the uh, McLaren, it's uh, seemingly, uh, you know, it's seemingly written before the race that they will be leading at this stage. We're, we're taking pole position, but uh, VRS kind of sim sport running very, very well. They haven't really had a great start to the season either. They had an absolutely horrible Bathurst uh, the first round of the season, getting themselves involved in multiple incidents. But this is their opportunity now to get a very, very good point haul. And who knows, with how the points might work out, they may be championship leaders at the end of this one depending on where the likes of uh, FA Racing G2 and TTL finish. Connery, is, is it bad that I like that McLaren because of the flames it looks out when it's uh, getting off power? It's, it's, it's not bad at all. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just, it's, you, could, you could cook a marshmallow on those, I tell you. It's always when it's all off power, when you're off throttle, and it's just firing off all the, uh, burning off all the un, un, uh, unused petrol. Uh, fumes that are uh, in that as it's going down the, uh, the pit straight once again and uh, you always feel that it's it's almost like a James Bond car here you know it's a way a method of uh, defending from the cars behind here Connery is it going to turn one there it is again just just flames the flames everywhere yeah, it's every schoolboy's dream to have a uh, have a car that just spits fire out the back. And you know, if you're wondering if that is realistic, yes, it's yes. very realistic. Yes, Go and see is. these cars in real life. It's basically like a flamethrower out the back. Uh, looking further back, ninth and tenth place, first Mr. Mavano Red and Jim. Uh, we got a car Jim, off at the first she came behind. This is Josh Rogers. Oh dear, it's, it's not been his day today for Josh Rogers. We'll have a look at that one. Yeah, he. Um, it was on the exit there, through the left-hand part. The back end just kicked around a little bit, un got unsettled on the curb, had to take to the gravel. Luckily, there's a bit of uh, a bit of gra a bit of runoff there to be able to take to, but always risky taking off to the gravel there because you could easily just lose control with the bumpiness of that gravel there. Right? Yeah, definitely sort of, I think he awkwardly took that left part of that chicane. You do want to run a huge amount of the curves where you can through that first chicane and maybe the damper settings on that TTL Audi not quite ideal uh, for the way it came off. Sort of high center of the car, I think he just likely got the chicane just that little bit wrong and it basically spat him out to the right side of the track, but well done by him to keep it off the barrier. Just took to the gravel, dropped a couple positions, but most importantly, it's still running and let's be real, probably has a little bit of PTSD from that backward spin to the first chicane where I think he's expecting to drill that NX car. Well, 
Uh, it, it appears we've got yet more technical problems here at Jesus Cecilia. We've lost him now in this one. Car 15. Are you sure that wasn't the incident limit? No. Uh, oh, that was mean. Wow. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's all. Uh, I racing. If you've got any complaints, please address them to Randy Cheneth. That's Randy Cheneth, and not anybody else in this commentary booth here, Connery. We, we like to we like to separate ourselves from Randy's comments uh, from time to time. Uh, <laughs> yes, we do. As I was just looking at a couple of changes for position uh, in and around uh, that top ten area. This pack of cars involving Mivano Red. You've got Jim Racing White, and you've also got FA Racing G2. They had a bit of a scrap heading down into the Red Affiliate Chicane. In fact, both of those cars currently ahead of FA Racing G2. Well, they were behind coming down into the braking zone for the first turn. Yep, so uh, looking at those BMW, the BMWs are coming through and uh, they're uh, doing a good job so far. And Sebastian Job, I tell you what, I think with him, he'll be happy to have those cars go past him because it gives him a little bit of slipstream here now to work with to do a bit more fuel saving here, Ander. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of the big things you just sort of tuck in and, you know, work and really worked that slip stream. We've seen that from the race leaders pretty much the whole way through this entire first, you know, three quarters of the stint. We're starting to get near the end of it. And this is sort of where we might see uh, if anyone's not going for that typical one stop, excuse me, two stop strategy, they want to push it out to a three stopper. I would expect pit stops likely coming down. Uh, uh, people hitting pit road potentially a little bit early. Typically you want to push as long as you can, but sometimes people will opt to hit pit lane a little bit on the early side. So just look for potential pit stops here on the early side of the hour. And then also keep in mind people who just flat out missed the fuel economy and didn't quite get the number right. And also look at the last couple laps for that NX Racing Blue yeah. Machine. He has gapped Mitchell de Jong. He's now 1.2 second lead versus uh, basically just few, the few tents we've seen through this entire first stint. Yeah, I, I was just about to mention that, Randy. You took the words out of my mouth. That tells you uh, how exp how much we've worked together, that you're able to read my mind in that one. Yeah, uh, just in brief. Uh, my commentary game up. is really diminishing then. <laughs> the uh, Justin Brunner has really turned it up here in this one. 1.2 seconds is the gap between him and second place Mitchell de Jong. So uh, De Jong trying to uh, hang on here, but uh, I tell you what, I think uh, he uh, is really starting to struggle now with that car and to keep up with him. And he's losing out those two tenths or so every lap, these last two couple of laps. And the uh, last three laps, you could definitely see that he's been in and around that two tenths of a second mark that he's been losing out. And now, Connery, because the gap's growing to such a point, he'll, be he'll have lost the slipstream as well. Yep, so he can't, save, uh, he can't fuel save as effectively as he uh, otherwise could have sitting in the slipstream. So uh, this is the point now where we're kind of having to be thinking, okay, are we actually okay to hit the hour mark uh, on this stint? And then uh, you've got to worry about hitting the hour mark on the, uh, on the second stop as well to get yourself to the end of the race. So uh, this is going to hurt Coanda just a little bit that they're not able to lock onto the back of the NX Racing Blue car. But uh, I think they're going to be pretty far ahead of everyone else in terms of the fuel strategy anyway with how long they spent behind Brunner. But looking uh, behind as well, third and fourth, Marcus Lenderman doing a good job keeping with that Mercedes in the second of the uh, VRS Quinter Simspot cars and uh, able to keep that gap to around three tenths of a second is Justin Brunner now. But three tenths of a second faster on that last lap was Justin Brunner in the lead. So yeah, that slipstream is definitely gone now and uh, he's now able to just pull away at will at the front there. He's absolutely on fire and I tell you what, I think his team has said, right, What's your fuel like? Let's have a look at the numbers. Start turning up. Let's uh, let's really push on and uh, get that gap out a little bit to give us a bit of breathing room when it comes to that first pit stop here. If they're confident that they can get to the hour here now and to turn up the, uh, the, the pressure on the cars behind, they're, they're in a really good position here, Randy. Yeah, they definitely are, and I, I would suspect that's likely what happened. What's happened is that they've probably seen that their fuel number is good. 
and then he can stretch over the one hour mark here to this first stint and they've pretty much just let uh, Brunner loose here to be able to run away but keep in mind for Mitchell De Jong if he's still doing a bit of fuel economy bit of fuel saving he might be able to still close that gap back down and in because even though Justin Brunner is going to be quick through these last few laps if that is indeed what's happened if Mitchell can keep the fuel consumption low they'll have a bit of a shorter fill when they're on pit road and likely leave their box a second or so early so I suspect that if uh, that is the situation don't be surprised if that coin of sport car makes a little bit of a leap forward through the pit strategy and of course you also have to talk about what are teams going to do about tires there's been some joking about potential uh, people potentially doing triple stints here today as Mitchell a little bit wide coming through that final corner which was a little bit of a risk putting those left side tires on that astro turf that green stuff it is really 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 slippery we also have to think about tire strategy are people going to take tires here at this first stop are they going to not take tires at the first stop and then of course driver swaps he's going to get in these various race cars up and down the field don't forget you can get social with us here today we're on twitter and we're also on uh, facebook check us out and if you're using twitter get interact with us there use the hashtag iRacingWCS that's iRacingWCS is the hashtag you want to use for that one to get involved in this one Jack Styles is keeping an eye on the uh, social media for us today and providing you with uh, up updates on twitter as well so if you're not able to be uh, looking at the screen at least you can uh, you can keep an eye on it and of course at real vrs of course uh, twitter account you want to uh, get involved with as well on this one today with the uh, with this uh, vrs virtual racing school gt iris in world championship series race round three here at monza and it's certainly been an interesting first first hour here and it's justin brunner who's just pulling out lap after lap now at the front there 2.2 seconds is the gap between him and second place vrs quanda simspot mitchell de jong third place team 33 alexander voss behind the wheel it's about five and a half seconds behind that second place driver but he's got the uh, number one vrs quanda simspot car right behind him there to that uh, number one car doing a lot of fuel saving here as we're heading towards that first pit stop cycle so we'll be keeping an eye on everything make sure that it's all going well what we'll do in fact then is just take you a lap on board with that number one car then give you some race spot fan immersion There we go then, 
a lap on board with Marcus Lenderman in that very last corner sim spot car fourth place at the moment we were watching them because they were right behind that team 33 car not able to get any closer but quite frankly at the moment connery they're just maybe content with just sticking behind for the time being get as much of that fuel saving and draft as possible as we're heading towards that hour mark now yeah exactly this is uh, sort of the first very very crucial stage of the race we're about five minutes from hitting uh, that two hours to go mark so if anyone can get uh, well even vaguely near that or preferably over that margin before they come down on towards the lane that would be very very beneficial for them indeed we've pretty much seen almost the entirety of the field fuel saving uh, on this first stint so uh, it, it's just a matter of who's fuel, who, who has fuel, fuel saved enough absolutely and uh, well we're heading towards that uh, that strategy call. We're going to start seeing who has done what. But the thing is, Justin Brunner, uh, Rende, has been out front since the, the drop of the green flag here. He's got 3.2 seconds at the front. And you just feel that he did that fuel saving in the first 40, 45 minutes of the race. And now he's just getting the gap up so that he can then just have that little bit longer pit stop, perhaps. Definitely seems like that could be the situation, but we're gonna have to keep an eye on it. He's opened up quite the gap. It's gone from basically nothing through the majority of the stint now and just randomly out to 3.2 uh, seconds. So either Mitchell is still in hardcore fuel economy mode, trying to get an insane fuel number through this for his stint, or Justin Brunner is just a god of the McLaren to simply put OP at Monza, which would he expect? Just now, we do have to start keeping an eye on pit road though, because while the hour is what everyone's talking about, what everyone is expecting, it is not out of the realm of possibility that people miss it. We're already seeing it. Hayden Burns, Vendeball Sim Racing Yellow. They've hit pit, they are hitting pit road right now. They cannot go to the hour mark. They are a full five minutes short on that front. So it's going to have to be a two-stopper unless someone can save an immense amount of fuel later on in this race. But if you cannot stretch it to the hour through the first stint, you're going to have the most draft that you are the entire race. doesn't look good for you through the entire rest of the show. Yep, yeah, so uh, those guys, they... Uh yeah, they're, they're, they're going to have to just change the strategy up here and maybe not put a fu full fuel tank in here and uh, go for a little bit of a just a, not quite a full fuel stop, get the go away, 24.3 seconds. So tw uh, that's definitely going to be a three-stop strategy there, you would imagine, for them, uh, Connery, with a pit stop that short, taking no tyres either. Yeah, exactly. So they'll get themselves off and away will Vendeval Sim Racing Yellow. So they've pretty much committed themselves uh, to this uh, three-star strategy. We've also got the car of the 42 of Vendeval Sim Racing Blue also down on towards the lane as well. Let's see if anyone joins uh, them. As we see uh, Dream Factory, they head past pit lane. So do Jim Racing, so do Mavano. So I don't think uh, many people will try to even commit to no, we got a group stop, i think got a group colac and we got radical sim racing uh or excuse me radicals online why it couldn't hit the lane yep so now we're set to see these uh, a this... cars in the lane boot -a -loop. sorry yeah yeah we're set to see these teams that have uh, they've been trying to push it and trying to get to the hour mark we're two minutes short of the hour here and uh, well these drivers are just finding that they've not quite saved enough fuel or maybe they've they've seen that they have saved enough fuel, but they've seen that there's a gap that they all fall into here, Randy, because they'll have their team looking at the track map and say, right, we want that little bit of clean air, perhaps, or be able to fall in just behind a driver that's maybe just as quick as us to be able to then get that slip, pick up that slip, slipstream once again. No, there's no way. If you're pitting right now, even if if you have the fuel economy to go extra laps, you have to do it here at Monza because it could pay off in dividends later on. You never want to leave a little bit of fuel economy on the table as Justin Brunner gets around Lucas Jetstad and the MSP Phoenix BMW. So pit road becoming a very busy place, and I wouldn't be surprised if some of our leaders may struggle just a little bit. Now, those who are going to come down this lap are in a slightly better situation because they, uh, based on the uh, pit lane delta, as well as the amount of time you'll spend in your box, you'll go over the hour when you after you come down pit road on this coming lap 
He still will not be in the greatest of scenarios. Let's see what Justin Brunner does. He's taking a little bit of a tighter line through that final corner. Race leader hits the box right here. Mitchell DeYoung, he's going to come into the pit stops right here as well. Alexander Voss takes a regular line off that final corner. He's going to go another lap. Marcus Lenderman is going to come in. Looks like Diago from a Dream Factory as well. Jim is going to go another lap as well. So a bit of a split strategy here, and I really, really like this for that team number 33 car, being able to stretch this another lap. This could pay off in dividends later on. It may not seem like a big thing now, but one lap of better fuel economy, especially if they can do this on the next lap, uh, excuse me, the next stint as well, I think it's going to be a huge, huge factor for these guys. Yeah, it certainly is. So Brunner then on pit lane. He's pointing his car at the pit exit because it is a tight pit exit here if you're at the uh, far end of the uh, the garages on this uh, pit road. So uh, getting that car out of the pits is always a little bit of struggle unless you uh, angle the car, which he has done. Interesting to see from those further down as well. The, uh, so Esther and Radicals both took full fuel. Glacier North, number seven, JJ Nyland, it's only took 30 seconds of fuel in that pit stop. So got committing to a three-stop strategy there. Justin Brunner coming out alongside the 26 car. Side by side out of pit road. That's not what Justin that's, Brunner would have wanted to have seen there. That's, uh, that's I think, going to be a, a three-stopper from the NX car because Mitchell's still on pit road. Well, Brunner is out and uh, Dream Factory are out as well. And I tell you what, I think Mitchell De Jong has done tires as well. Yep. This is this this is going to be interesting, Connor. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. It's sort of side by side off the lane once again. This is Tan Trans Tasman Racing versus Coanda as they get themselves uh, a little bit too close for comfort there, coming off the lane. But uh, after you, after you, after you, there we go. Trans Tasman Racing gets themselves off to, off and away with the uh, VRS Quan Sinsport number eight car sitting in behind. There it was a little bit of a confusing situation there as they fall back into traffic. We'll have Team 33 come down on towards the lane, and that extra lap could play uh, a huge part in getting them more towards uh, that uh, first spot instead of sitting in the likes of P number three, P number four, as we the see the rest of your cars come down towards the lane now. Yeah. That did take that one extra lap. Yeah, I was just about to say, those cars that take an extra lap, so... Uh, team 33, Jim, FA Racing. That's interesting to see FA Racing able to take that extra lap. Uh, TTL Esports as well. They're on pit road. So to a pure racing team, Yellow, Jim Black, uh, SDK Apex Racing UK, Simicu Index Racing Yellow, uh, Vendeville Sim Racing White, and Thrustmaster Mavano Yellow, all on pit road now. So it's uh, a bit of a, uh, a tale of two pit stops here, one after the other, as... Uh, Coming down the pit road is still that Mr. Master Mavano Yellow. They haven't hit their pit stall yet, but uh, in X, here we are. Justin Brunner coming down the pit straight at the moment, crosses the line, and is back out in front then. Who's going to be classed as his second? We'll have to wait and see for it all. He's got a gaggle of cars coming out of pit road once again. And, uh, well, out of pit road the go then. And look at this Dream Factory. Second place overall, but look at that third place for Jim Racing Yellow. Great switch around there. Fourth place for uh, FA G2 Racing, but of course, some cars have taken tyres in that pit stop. You're looking at VRS Quan and Sim Spot, Mitchell De Young taking tyres. So to Team 33, Kev Shuby actually has jumped into that car. Marcus Lenderman also took tyres. Jim Racing White, they took tyres as well as Rustmaster Mavano Red, Pure Racing Team Yellow and Jim Racing Black. So there's a sum of the many cars that have actually taken tyres on that first pit stop here, Randy. And now we're going to see how that strategy pans out. Fresher tyres for this middle stint here could do them well heading towards uh, the final, uh, heading towards that final pit stop here um, for some of those cars. And VRS Quinn and Swim Spot with Mitchell De Jong will be hoping for something similar to uh, last round. Definitely could. It's something we need to keep an eye on is who's going to be going for uh, that shorter pit stop as well in terms of that shorter pit strategy. Because remember, we had some people who came down towards pit road a bit on the early side, and I'm not sure if they're going to be able to make this on a full two stop or the cold weather is going to speed up the lap times and make that difficult. So maybe look for drivers that come down and, you know, teams that have jumped a lot of spots. It's likely they would not have taken tires 
and they would do a short fill. So when the timing eventually updates, when the race leaders start circulating around here, that's going to be uh, what we keep an eye on. I think Dream Factory, they could be in contention for that, as well as maybe a couple of the other teams out near the front that have jumped a lot of spots. That Radicals car, Wyatt Gooden, they may be on for that as well. But it's definitely interesting to see the tire strategy, seeing the likes of Mitchell DeYoung and, of course, that uh, that Team 33 car that Kay Kashubi actually got into. So they had a full stop, not only uh, fuel and tires, they did a driver swap as well. Mitchell DeYoung, VRS Command Assist Board, they did a full stop but did not do a driver change. So interesting to see the way the strategies are going to work out. And watching those two cars in particular perhaps run through this field as Kei Kashubi is already making moves. That's Max Beneke, who is laps down. Actually, no, he's on the lead lap, but still owes us a pit stop, unfortunately. Yeah, Max Beneke, um, no, he should have made his pit stop. Oh, yeah, he did. I take yeah, that did. back. I thought uh, he may have had an earlier stop and may have, you know, still been out there and running. Uh, I mean, where are they now, actually? Pure Racing Team Red 17. But, of course, there's teams that have had tyre stops involved in that one. So we'll have to wait until that second pit stop to uh, see where they pan out towards the, the end of this race. But you can see the damage to the back of that uh, that Max Bedeke car. But uh, he's in a foul mood. You can tell by the body language of that car that he's not in a, uh, a good mood here as that rear wing really has taken a beating here today. And uh, he's, he's not good. He's going to struggle on with that car out of Lesmo to the go and uh, the English race team catch is getting out of the way for, for the time being as they head down towards the Scarry chicane but uh, out from Dream Factory and Jim racing yellow they're battling for position at the moment and uh, Jim in that BMW they've been looking uh, very handy around here today Connery they've, uh, they've really stepped up their pace in this event but of course this middle start, this middle stint here, we've got that mix of strategies. We're going to have to uh, now wait out for uh, for the final pit stops to see where everyone sort of falls into place. Yeah, we will. So such is the excitement of the strategy games here at Monza as both those uh, teams and drivers will head their way down in towards the red Familia, but uh, obviously Jim not close enough. Uh, to be able to do anything with Dream Factory in that second place right now. So this is basically just shaking up your entire field uh, here. You still have a pack of uh, cars for what's P number six and down. And guess what? That's Radicals Online, up from P41 to P6. Yeah, great job from Radicals so far in this one. And uh, Wyatt Gooden doing a fantastic job here today for them. Just ahead of that TTL Esports car, Joshua Rogers, and Joshua having to uh, twice recover from mistakes, and uh, they uh, certainly uh, trying to get involved here and try and get uh, get a good run here. Esther Racing have had a driver change, by the way, and uh, out jumped uh, Cholak. And uh, so uh, they've had that uh, that driver change, that first pit stop, but with no tyre change either, Randy. So you can do that. Um, you can do that uh, pit stop and driver change without tyres. But really, if you're doing that driver swap, you generally want to try and get new tyres on. Them. Yeah, and that's you know one of the interesting things that we're talking about in terms of strategy, because I know you know people, there was a joke in the chat among some of the teams that. Reese Cornell has been in the YouTube chat sort of saying, uh, saying it and before a triple stone on the tires because the weather is so cold. So to have some of the teams do a full stop with fuel and tires, even without a driver swap, and really that VRS kind of support number eight car, uh, I think might be the one to really keep an eye on because that team has been very quick. That car has been very quick all season. They're quick at Bathurst, they're quick at Sebring, and they're quick here at Monza, but I think the strategy is where they've continually shot themselves in the foot. And right now, they're looking at a 29-second deficit. So if that index racing blue car can maybe somehow, some way, stretch this race the whole three hours on the tires, it'd be a bit of a shock, and I doubt, honestly doubt anyone will be able to go that long on them. But if they can, I'm not sure how Kalanda can make up a deficit like this if, if that's something teams think they can pull out of their hat. Uh, just, I was just noticing that Jared Phil Sells lost two positions on that pit straight um, uh, to the Pure Racing Team Red and also Team 33 car. So down two positions and they look to be down on top speed as well as Gerald, Jared um, as they're headed in towards... Gerald? This, I don't know where that came from. Gerald uh, still said. <laughs> um, it's better. It's better than uh, what normally happens with some commentators who call him yeah, Jared, which is not. It's Jared. Um, 
<laughs> there you go. Could be a marine. He could be Jarhead. Possibly. No, he's not. He's Australian. Um, so, <laughs> um, anyway, he's down to, what, 17th place there in this one. And he's at the back of that uh, pure racing team, Blue Cap. Got cars in front as well, looking at uh, SDK Apex car, Jamie Fluke. Mitchell de Jong. Now, Cos de Jong has had them with those fresh tyres on the car there. And Jonas Wallmeyer just ahead of them as well. So, Mitchell de Jong is the first of the cars that has taken a full fuel and tyre stop here, Connery. So, we've got to keep an eye on how he progresses here in this middle stint. We saw how he progressed around Sebring, but of course, Sebring, the fresh tyres had more of an effect around there. There's more, more corners to start with, as here he goes with the run down the sand for the straight. Is, and I don't think Bormai is going to fight this one too much around the outside of Vertifilio. And in fact, that's going to be complete even before they get themselves on the brakes uh, for the heavy braking zone of turn number one, turn number two. So I'm very interested in uh, uh, Mitchell's pace right here. He's got one minute uh, 48.4 that last time by, which actually wasn't too far. It was actually a little bit slower than your race leader that last time by, but of course, uh, Mitchell had to make that overtaking move, had a little bit of slower traffic on all the tyres ahead of him, so that one isn't exactly representative. So if he gets a couple of laps in clear air here, uh, we can really start to tell where, he, where his pace lies on those fresh tyres. Well, he's slower than the second place running car of Dream Factory. Diego Catalan, he just did a 48.1. Compare that to that coin of Sithbore, he just did a 48.4. Jim just did a 48.2. Sebastian Job just did a 48.5. 48.3 from uh, Friscott's in the NX Racing Yellow Car. The new tires aren't helping Mitchell right now. And yeah, he's making passes, but I feel like they just made the same mistake they, they made at Sebring, where Mitchell went out on new tires while everyone double stinted through the middle stint. But Mitchell was so held up by traffic through that center stage of the race that he was pretty much out of contention by the end of it. I'm just going to jump in uh, before you say anything here, Paul. It's just, uh, the thing is, I, I think that was sort of a blip there for Mitchell De Jong because his previous laps, lap 35, lap 36, lap 37, were all within the 147.7 range. So it, it might have just been a, a bad lap of traffic for uh, Mitchell. I, I was I was hoping there was going to be more sort of uh, <laughs> more sort of uh, counter counter discussion between the two. But yeah, look at the lap times there uh, as they've gone across. Uh, yeah, Justin Brunner. Now. Yeah, Justin Brunner, 48.1, 48.5 for uh, Dream Factory on this last lap. And yeah, you look at uh, Mitchell De Jong there, 47.6 even making that. But the thing is, he he did have a slipstream onto the start of his lap. Uh, which would gave him a little bit of time uh, but yeah new tyres you're going to be quicker out of the corners and uh it is he's going to be quicker into in, through the braking zones as well he's going to be able to brake later if he wants to but uh, quite frankly he'll be doing a little bit of fuel saving so it's a case of uh, just lifting off and then into the uh, into the uh, corners he goes but uh, out those corners as i say he's gonna have uh, those um, those runs out the corners using the grip of those tyres getting to the power earlier so uh, his lap time should be a little bit better than uh, than some of the guys up at the front there and uh, well just look at those guys at the front Justin Brunner is coming round for another lap so why don't we take you for a lap on a uh, few laps on board uh, with a couple of your drivers starting off with justin brunner then in that uh, nx racing blue let's give you some race spot tv fan immersion
there we are a couple laps on board with your current race leader in this virtual racing school gti racing world championship series round number three here at the autodromo nacional monza and uh, what a opening part of the race this has been let's have a look at the top eight standings here in today's race and it is simicube in x racing blue justin brunner with about 14.3 second lead over the dream factory in second place that mercedes doing well there in second with uh, jim racing gtr center yellow in third place right behind them so uh, those two pretty close together fourth place for the fa racing g2 logitech gcast Sebastian Job still behind the wheel. He started the race off in that one and he's still there. White Gooden, what a race he's had so far. Started off his 41st place up to fifth place in this race so far for Radicals Online. Sixth place, Simi Cube, Inex Racing Yellow, Robin Friscops uh, in there. Seventh for Glacier North. They've, they've got a little bit of a contra strategy going on here. They took a short fuel stop at their first pit, pit stop, so they're looking at maybe a three stopper here today. And TTL Esports, Joshua Rogers down in eighth place after a heart in mouth moment at the first chicane and uh, almost wiped out um, third place at the time, team, but uh, able to keep going here. And well, Randy. That first sort of hour and uh, 20 minutes gone, we've had the first pit stops here and we're seeing how the fresh tyres are working out for Mitchell De Jong. He's showing some decent pace, but I'm, I'm still on the edge on this one. I don't think he's going fast enough. Those tyres on the NX car need to completely fall flat, I think, in order for this to work out because you got to figure he's only about three seconds back and you talk about a full stint on, a, on old tyres. For Mitchell, he's got a pretty much average close to a second or a lap quicker in the NX Racing Blue car currently only circulating about two or three tenths quicker every single lap around. So I don't think this is going to pan out for Mitchell unless those tires on that NX Blue machine hit some sort of plateau. We're also keeping an eye on pit road because it's very likely that three stoppers will likely be making their second pit stop somewhere around 30 minutes uh, past that first one. So about an hour and a half to an hour and 40 minutes into this race is basically where we're expecting people to hit pit road for the three stop. Yeah, here we are then, live on iRacing Live, Racebot TV, Paul Smith, Randy Cheneff and Connor Maddock here today. Jack Styles on the social media for you. You can always keep up to date with our social media. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. And make sure you use the hashtag uh, iRacingWCS and uh, tweet at uh, RealVRS as we've had a car off and it's the Vendevil Sim Racing yellow car and it's at the chicane. And what has happened there? Well, they were under attack from the number 13. Gone into that chicane. Oh, a little bit of contact. And around goes that 13 car. Managed to keep it out of the way of everyone else, though. But uh, that BMW got caught up with them. And uh, not the, uh, the best of times there for the 13 car. Dropping down the order. So we just saw the replay there on screen. But, uh, yeah, Connery... Looking at this race, it's all calmed down now for the time being. Well, I say for the time being, apart from that contact there. But uh, everybody's looking towards the strategy game, looking towards what they can do as Ian Ford and the Evolution Racing Team 27 car comes on to pit road. Yeah, exactly. So in the next around about 10 to 15 minutes, we'll see those that have committed to the three-stop strategy to start coming down towards the lane. And then it's going to be... Uh, another issue of who can make the hour for the rest of your two stoppers right now, but uh, Nate Gagler cars going on for what is around about Ooh. Uh, what's going to be P4 you spot I'm talking just looking at Ian Ford because he has damage on that car that's not a scheduled stop he had a spin coming out of the first Lesmo got a big bite of oversteer on the track and was able, never able to get it back ran up over the curb and that pretty much spat him out into the inside wall on the right hand side, so that's why we're seeing Ian Ford down on pit lane yeah, we've got a, uh, we're going to have a, try and get a look at the uh, the replay here, try and find it, but uh, yeah, Ian Ford in that Evolution Racing, it's not been the best of days for the Evolution Racing team, we mentioned it earlier, as there we go, there it is on replay, lost control and heavy side impact with the left hand side of that car, it already had a little bit of damage on that uh, 27 car, but he's now on pit road and it's going to be, uh, I think he'll be parking it possibly, or well they're going to stay in the car and see what they can get out of here, because 
The thing is, when you get towards the end of the season, you just need as many points as possible because, crucially, Randy, for people in this championship, okay, you're fighting for the top of the championship, but you're also fighting for your opportunity to stay in this series as well, the top 25 qualifying for next year's championship. And that's really the big talking point about a series like this is being able to keep yourself in that with an eligible license and not having to run through the qualifying series because the qualifying series, even though it generally is the best teams more often than not, end up getting a license. It can be a bit of a lottery, a lot of those races uh, in terms of being able to get yourself in because you're talking just an overall group of less talented drivers and a very aggressive group of drivers because they know that they need to get a good result every single week in order to have any hope of really being the top 20 or you know whatever the, the number ends up being the cutoff um to maintain a license and work their way forward there have been questionable driving standards in that qualifying series in the past and if you can avoid that you want to do so at all costs as uh, well i'm looking at the, uh, the battle from fourth down to seventh you've got uh, radicals online right You've got FA Racing with Sebastian Job. You've got uh, Index Racing Yellow with Robin Friscops. You've got Glacier North with JJ Nylander. All battling out, all pretty close together. You've got BMW, Audi, and then two more BMWs. So those BMWs here today, Connery, really actually looking quite strong, quite favourable as we're going through towards the second half of this stint here. And uh, maybe those BMWs, that, because with that little bit of extra uh, downforce that those cars have, maybe looking after their tyres a bit more, and of course, the Audi with the extra weight penalty. Yeah, could well be. And uh, if you asked me before this race, I would have said, yeah, these BMWs going to be, you know, bottom half of the field. But we've got BMWs uh, running as high as currently in fifth place right now with uh, Jim Racing GTR Centre Yellows. So it's uh very very surprising indeed but uh i think what is playing into their hands right now is the weight of that audi it's uh, it, it's just not going to be a good day for them right now as oh glacier north looking down the inside of inex yellow there into the curve of parabolica not able to make that opportunity happen though and now let's see if uh likes of fa racing g2 now can defend from inex racing yellow because look at that inex have the slip stream they will Perhaps draw it alongside here, coming down in towards the first chicane. So it's Frisk Ops. He's going to take the position here. Sebastian's job, Sebastian job is not going to fight that one at all. There's absolutely no point. If they go side by side through here, they're basically just slowing each other down. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, that Lacey cow is just showing a little bit of impatience to try to make that move into the Parabolica. Okay, we, we have seen people make moves there in the past, but really you want to have the, the run out of the Parabolica. Uh, to get the speed all the way down towards the the, the retifilio and uh, you know what was that a little bit of impatience there randy from that number seven glacier car or, or was it just that he saw an opportunity and uh, maybe thought right we've got an opportunity here as far as i'm concerned with this bmw on this sort of pit strategy i don't think they can afford to be patient they have to make moves you know you're going for a three-stop race in a race like this you know there's no safety cars to help you out there's nothing of the sort so you need to make moves when you feel that you can you need to just be aggressive with it so i think for them yeah it was an aggressive move it was a dicey move but in order for their strategy to work they have to be able to make moves like that as uh, they head on through the Scarry chicane, you can see how that uh, Radicals car is just pulling away from this uh, group, this group behind him. So, uh, NX Racing Yellow, FA Racing, and Glacier North all just uh, losing track of White Gooden there in front. And uh, those guys doing a good job here at the moment. The, those BMWs really showing strong. And. Um, I always like to see the BMW do well personally. I, I think it's a quite a favoured car for some people, but uh, maybe it's because I embrace it all the time that I'm uh, quite biased towards it. Here we go then. Here's the move. Sebastian Job not able to compete with the uh, the top speed there. I never thought I'd say that. Uh, going into the first chicane and uh, gets the job done. Does that glacier car, but of course lighter car. Then we've seen that he's on the three sub strategy here. JJ also not fuel saving. Whereas yep. that FA G2 car likely is having to save fuel, and that's probably why that top speed is seeming so strong. Look at the run that Nylander gets out of that first chicane. He's, he's absolutely blitzed Sebastian John. Yeah, he's certainly doing a, a good job here. These, so his next target is that NX Racing yellow car of Robin Frisco. And uh, he's really got the bit between his teeth. But 
looking at the pit delta of, the, of that last pit stop that they did, which was exactly 30 seconds for the actual stop, 56 seconds from Kuhn to Kuhn, but that's not including the slowing down and then speeding up out of the pit road. So you can maybe say about, what, a minute and five or so uh, that you would lose for doing this three-stop strategy. Compare that to, uh, like, Justin Brunner did a, a, was only, what, 11 and a half seconds longer on, actually stopped on pit road. Is it really going to gain enough? Or is he going to maybe just jump those cars mid-pack around that he was, he was battling with earlier because he started 30th. He's up to 6th here at the moment. Is it just all about sort of trying to gap yourself over those cars that you were fighting? It's... There, the, well, there's no way that Glacier car, I think, is going to win this race. We saw Evolution Racing Team last season in the season opener. They did the same thing. But the important thing to note is that that Evolution Racing Team car was amongst... Well, those cars, rather. They were up amongst the lead fight running top five and out in front for a vast majority of that race. Now, of course, that was a race that Course Sim Racing Orange ended up uh, taking and uh, with um, Isaac and uh, and Freddie. So it's one of those things that, no, I do not think this Glacier North car is going to end up winning the race. I don't think their target should be NX, should be Dream Factory. You know, any of those cars in front of them that are on typical two-stop strategies, I don't think there's any way that Glacier is going to jump them. It's going to be those cars in the mid-pack that they're really targeting most of those guys that they're racing around. They simply were too deep in the field when this first happened. So expect Glacier to do something interesting, and there'll probably be another phase where they might be out in front. Um, but, however, they'll then make their third and final pit stop, and that'll basically put them way, way, way down the order. Speaking of the uh, three stoppers, Hayden Burns has brought his car onto pit road for Van Devil Sim Racing Yellow, and Wani Lopez has jumped in behind the wheel of that car. So we're at the halfway point of this race here. That was one of your three-stop cars uh, that we were seeing here. Not many have taken the option of a three-stop strategy, to be honest. And uh, really, it's whether it pans out here. We've got to wait and see. We've got to be patient to see how that strategy all works out for them. But this will be, uh, you'd imagine, about a 40-something second pit stop for them. Or oh, maybe they'll take tyres as well. In this one, yeah, they do. That's one mistake. One of the taking tyres with the three-stop. But... You're then going to have a short final stint, uh, stint uh, uh, pit stop pit for uh, for that Van Der Sim Racing yellow car. And we've been saying, Connery, uh, that we don't imagine any car not taking any, uh, not going there for a no tyre stop strategy. I mean, if one of the teams do want to go for something like that, it, you know, if you're usually a team that is further back through the field and you've just got, a, you know, a Hail Mary to try and gain yourself. Uh, a good couple of positions. It is a strategy that you can go for, but I think everyone's just going to stick to the two, the, uh, the double stints uh, right now. With uh, well, vast majority of them taking the tires in the final stints to go to the end. But uh, you've got uh, obviously other cars that are also doing the opposite strategy as well. Uh, you know, taking tires on that pass stop and then double stinting the two stops to the end. Uh, well, the other stops to the end. So we'll see how that one works out for them. But uh, you know. It, it's something that the teams, you know, have people designated to try and work out. You have these crew chiefs, you have these spotters just like running the calculations and sometimes there's some software involved in that one as well. So, you know, I think these teams are going to be well prepared for anything that might happen or which strategy they can go on. We're past the halfway point of this race. We just saw uh, Jim Racing uh, White make the overtake on the uh, SDK Apex Racing UK car of Jamie Fluke. And these Audis really are having to fuel save. And um, thank you, Bo Albert, for a little bit of uh, information there in the YouTube chat. Because Randy, as he's mentioned there, the BMW is a little more friendly towards the fuel save. So they're able to push harder in these in these stints here. Perhaps a little bit. I don't know how big the, ch the effect is, though, because I, I think one of the things to keep in mind that a lot of those BMWs out in front, they skip tires. And I think it's more likely that those top cars Probably just a little bit easier on the tires than the Audi is. Keep in mind, a little bit better downforce, a little bit lighter are what those cars are. So it could be also playing into effect as well. But at the same time, you do have a pretty long train of Audi. You got Josh Rogers, uh, Verdon Crowell, then you have a Merce uh, Mercedes SK Kashubi, then you get more Audis all in a line. So sort of interesting situation. Still watching Marcus, uh, excuse me, not Marty Splinter, but still watching that Virus Point of Sinsport car though of Mitchell De Jong, and I still don't think the lap times are there for him to be able to reel his way forward. It just did a 47.5, so 
to a 47.9 of that semi, semi cube nx racing blue car so unless there's some crazy shenaniganry that coanda is pulling out i think they got the strategy wrong maximilian Pineke making up a position on uh, mario bertolotti so that's up to 13th now for the recovering pure racing team red car and it was down the pit straight on the slipstream down into turn number one for max Bineke. and uh, this connery is, is a man who will be hugely disappointed with how this race has gone straight from the start yeah exactly you know it's facing the wrong way coming out of turn number one and two is uh, you know not what most drivers like to happen so <laughs> that is the thing is that's the cards that he's been dealt right now and uh, he has, just has to do it the best he can with his teammate to be able to drag that uh, pure racing team red car all the way back up through the field and we can't forget they were tied leading the championship coming into this round that is uh, i don't think that's going to be the case uh, once we're done here at monza yeah, there's going to be some uh, furious mathematics going on uh, in the background here um, when the race finishes, when we get the results, so we can uh, try and give you what the championship standards will be at the end of this one. But uh, Esther Racing, really at the back of Keiko Shubin, that uh, Team 33 car, and they're right up behind Joshua Rogers as well. So three cars, Audi, Mercedes, Audi, coming out the Parabolica all together. I would imagine that Keiko Shube, with the fresher tyres, is going to make the move. And here he comes out alongside. And Joshua Rogers isn't going to fight that one. He's just going to let him go past, let him slot in in front, and then use the slipstream, use that draft for a little bit of extra fuel saving. Gap out front, by the way, just for information, 15 and a half seconds between Justin Brunner and that NX Racing blue car and the dream factory of uh, Diogo. Uh, Diego Catalan, sorry, uh, should say, for uh, driving for them. With Jim Racing, GTR Centre Yellow in third place. Still sticking to the back of that Dream Factory car. But uh, you see that battle on screen. Joshua Rogers trying his best as uh, just as he cuts away. In fact, Dream Factory, they've got a, uh, a car between themselves and uh, that uh, gym car, and that's Jack Sedgwick. So Jack Sedgwick has uh, ne uh, been able to get back out and track after his uh, little bit of technical problems earlier on and able to uh, get back into this race. He's looking quick and he's seeming to... Um, Seeming to be able to uh, keep up with these guys at the front, but that's because he was battling for the lead um, in the uh, early stages of this race before he had that technical problem. So he's in between those two, but that's just spoiling our battle a little bit between second and third place as they're going through the Parabolic Cup once again. So that's uh, that battle for second. And you look at the battle for fourth place as well. Still going on here, Connery. Radicals on line, White Gooden. Uh, Inex Racing Yellow with Robin Friscops and Glacier North with JJ Nylander and JJ looking like he's going to try and make a move uh, sometime soon. Yeah, sometime soon, maybe in the next couple of seconds, but nope, he's just going to uh, fall in line uh, behind his fellow BMW there as deep on the brakes he'll go anyway down in towards the Retifilio, but uh, again, that's just kind of more for show, maybe trying to get couple of tenths of a second there but uh, you know the driver the team at the front of this three car train right now has been running so so very well we mention it every single time they uh, they well they, they they draw our focus this ride goes online up p number 30 uh, up 37 places 37 places and you know when you consider the standard of this field these are the top gt racers in the entirety of iRacing uh, that is absolutely impressive it is. It's a, it's a fantastic job. Of course, they're going to have to have their uh, driver change uh, at the um, at the final pit stop for them. Everybody just having to uh, work the numbers here, though, today. As we look further down, 17th, Grossmaster Mavano red, Dion Fowler at the wheel. He's got Pure Racing Team Bloom, Jonas Waldmeyer behind him. Then he's got VRS Trans Tasman Racing, Jared Philsell. And then behind them, Pure Racing Team Yellow as well. So two Pure Racing Team cars involved in this one, Randy, as they're heading down towards this garage chicane. The BMW at the head of the field has got a slight bit of damage on the uh, the front left of that car. So it's not going to be... It's also got a little bit of... Uh, 
just a little bit of damage on the front right wheel arch as well as they're heading down the, the pit uh, down the back straight heading towards the parabolica here around it but um that Thrustmaster car has jumped positions as uh, JJ Nylander, one of your three stop track cars, is on pit road as well. So they're going to come down for their second pit stop. They're going to drop, but you're right. I mean, talking about this little fight, though, I think all these cars have a bit of damage. You have Jamie Fluke. He's a little bit away ahead of this, but not too much. He's damaged. Then you got that Mavano BMW front damage. Your racing team blue car, Jonas Holmeyer. They're a little crumpled as well. Jared Philsell, that car got killed at the first uh, chicane on the first lap. And, well, Daniel Schoik is going to take a look on that Pure Racing Team yellow car up the inside. And, oh, just going to get that done nicely before the entry of the chicane. Jared Philsell made that a little bit tight, but overall a clean move regardless. Yeah, it was just a little bit of squeezing there going on between the two of them as they headed onto the, break, onto the braking here uh, into that uh, retophilia. Jared Philsell... He's a competitive, he really is a competitive driver. He, uh, he races the V8s, he, he, he took part in the uh, Race Pop Race Day last year, of course, in the uh, Porsches, and always impressed in those uh, Porsche 911 GT3 Cup cars. But uh, this, it's a different kettle of fish, is this Ferrari that he's driving, and he's just dropped to the back of this queue of cars now. And that queue of cars has got their sights set on Jamie Fluke, just up the road they've got a lot of traffic between them which is of course the uh, MSP Phoenix racing cars Gregory Tansom uh, in between them so uh, they've got to get past him first before they get to that uh, Apex Racing UK car of Jamie Fluke but going down that back straight once again again Pure Racing Team Yellow they're looking to make the move and uh, Pure Racing Team Blue are just going to let them by here down the back straight towards the Parabolica a lot of bit of team play working there. Obviously feeling that the yellow car is the faster of the two cars. And so they're working their way through up in positions so that they can drop pull that blue car along Connery. Yeah, certainly looks like it's going to be the case as we see a pass for P number seven there as FA Racing G2 lose the position to team number 33. And that's Keiga Shube currently behind the wheel of that one. So that's the team that was the ex hoisting about four motorsports car. I've got to say, um, the, the two BMWs, by the way, fourth and fifth, swap positions as well. There was three cars in that battle at one point, but they've uh, separated themselves down to just two cars, and uh, Inex Racing Yellow have got themselves ahead of Rad Radicals online now. So as they go into the Lesmos once again, that's a change of position then. Fourth for Inex Racing Yellow, fifth for Radicals online. But I'll tell you what, Radicals won't be too unhappy about that, considering the day that they've had so far here, Randy. Oh, like I say, like we were saying earlier, 41st to 5th place, that's uh, that's one heck of an achievement. Doing a good job. It's going to be interesting to see how the strategy pans out, though, and what happens, because we're about 15 minutes away from the final round of pissed off. Actually, a little bit closer to 20. Let me slightly uh, correct that. But, um, yeah, they've done a phenomenal job. This is one of the best drives through the field I think we've ever seen. Up 37 spots since the st start of this race. A little bit of strategy has come into that, but that's more than, I think, relevant in my opinion, and it's important to note that the pace of that Radicals BMW isn't even bad. You got to factor in Mitchell De Jong. He's sort of the pace setter right now on drivers who took tires. He's doing 47 fives, and Wyatt Gooden's out there doing 48 zeros on an older set of tires. So he's doing very, very well, is Wyatt Gooden. And something I want to talk about: Mitchell is sort of within the delta that I believe that if that Semi Cubinix Racing Blue car takes tires, I think Mitchell will jump them. The question I have, though, is over that second stint, if that index blue car doesn't take tires, or excuse me, if it does take tires, I don't think there's any way Coan is going to take tires at the next stop. So Mac Backham will be in the car on an old set. Is that whoever's getting into that index car is going to have a McLaren on fresh tires at Monza, and I don't think there's any way in the world that the eight machine will be able to maintain a gap for long. So while we might see towards the end of this final hour, we might see Vera's Quintus Sport number eight lead this race. Sort of a big question mark if they'll be able to maintain that to the end. Joshua Rogers down a position here, down to 10th. Marcus Lenderman has made a move on him into turn number one. So that's a change of position in your, just at the end of your top 10 here. And Lenderman moving forward then in this field at the moment. Looking ahead now, but he's got 3.7 seconds between him and Sebastian Job in that number 14 car as they're headed towards the uh, second half of this lap here. We've got about an hour and uh, 16 minutes remaining in this one. 
and uh, let's just talk about quickly that pure racing team red car in recovery mode here for connery it, they've made it maximum becker has made it to the back of this group of cars of esther racing ttl esports and that vrs number one car that we were just talking about yeah he has and well looking at the stint times he seems uh, about comparable uh, to pretty much everyone else in this train so he is uh, on cycle in terms of the strategy he's just uh, had an absolutely abysmal start to the race, but uh, this is potentially good points on the cards right now for PRT Red to try and uh, stem the bleeding somewhat for, from that opening lap incident. So they've got what, a train of four cars ahead of them right now that could bring them up in towards uh, that P number eight, P number seven spot uh, there. As actually, that's a little bit of lap traffic there just ahead of VRS Manson's number one car. That's the 46 of Jim Racing Pink there, running into issues a little bit earlier on. So hopefully they get themselves uh, out well out of the way and allow us to allow this pack to continue. Uh, well, currently fuel saving, but potentially fighting. Well, uh, let's just quickly run you through. We've got uh, we've just caught an hour before we expect the next round of pit stops. And uh, as Pure Racing Team Red looking to the inside into the Della Rosia, let's have a look at your movers and shakers then. So it's Simicube in next racing blue in that McLaren in first place. They've been there from the start. Second place, Dream Factory. Good race from them so far with Jim Racing yellow in third inex racing yellow in fourth up 23 positions there you can see but radicals online that's the big mover there 36 positions they have gained in fifth place vrs coming in spot number eight car down two positions in sixth place with team 33 i know it's only says team on our graphics but it is definitely team 33 in seventh place eight places fa racing they're up six positions for qualifying not the best qualifying session from them today for sebastian job We've got Isaac Price to jump into that car yet uh, for the final pit stop. VRS Quentin Sims spot number one is in ninth place with TTL Esports in tenth place. But you can see those guys that have uh, moved up and down the field, and you look further down the field as well here at the uh, movers, and look at some of those guys that have moved down there. That VRS Trans Tasman Racing we saw involved in the incident at the start of the race at the first chicane. They were spun around the wrong way, facing the wrong way. They've down 14 positions. Teo Martin Esports look at 24 positions in this race as well, and the rest of them. Yeah, Evolution Racing Team at 14, so to SRT Esports. So uh, we've seen some uh, good movers in this field, but uh, as you go down to the end of the field as well, some uh, not so favourable <laughs> moves in that final third of your field here today, Connery, with like uh, Inex Red down 28 positions, Jim Pink down 21, uh, 24 positions for Odox uh, Samsung Pro. Yeah, not a great day for those guys at all, as I'm currently watching the Esther Racing Team versus PRT Red Battle. Maximilian Beneke is having a ton of issues trying to get past it, decides to sling one down the inside of the first Lesmo, and he wasn't able to do that at any of the regular overtaking points on his racing circuit. He tried it down in towards turn number one, just couldn't find the gap to slot himself through. Tried it, tried it down in towards uh, the Della Roja, that didn't work either, so he decides, hey, I'm going to sling one down the inside where he least expects it, down into the first Lesmo, and he gets the position. Well, there we are then. Beneke up to 11th. We've seen how he can be a really quick driver, but he's also uh, can be a bit assertive, shall we say, with some of the moves that he makes uh, in this race. We saw where him get involved in the incident. OK, so we've got uh, that incident at the start of the race where he was spun round. But then also early on at the Parabolica, got a, he spun himself on one of the Evolution Racing Team cars as well. So um, we've seen how these things have been changed up. Dream Factory, by the way, are coming under a little bit of pressure from Jim Yeller at the moment. Second and third as they go through the first chicane, the Retifilio here around it. And uh, Dream Factory, Diego, Diego Catalan, should I say. It's because I've got a teammate called Diogo. I keep on saying that rather than Diego. But uh, Diego, second place for that Dream Factory. Really good outing here so far for the Dream Factory in that Mercedes. 
Yeah, they're doing quite good, aren't they? Quite well indeed, as they're currently running that second spot. See him hop that curb. That curb in the second chicane is one of the most difficult things to set up a car for, uh, for around here, around Monza. You're always trying to set this car up flat. You want to lower the rake, and that makes the car not like those big hops. You need to do some crazy things sometimes with the dampers to make the cars work over there. And, well, Diogo, uh, Diego, I did it too. Dream Factory <laughs> did a good job of, doing, uh, of making their setup work over that, as the Mercedes has been one of the worst at being able, at least in my experience, setting the car up around this place, one of the worst being able to make it work up and over those bumps. But uh, they're doing very well as that Dream oh, Factory car. Esther, uh, go ahead. Esther Racing at uh, the second Lesbo. Oh. They've had an incident. Uh, we'll have a look at it here. Uh, they went off onto the gravel and they took to the air, lost control at the exit of the first Lesmo into uh, contact then. And uh, that's the barrier that they made heavy impact with. And I would imagine that they're going to be uh, taking that car back to the pits and uh, parking it there, Connery. Yeah, exactly. That car doesn't look too healthy at all, uh, at least on the live pictures. They'll lose a position to STK Apex Racing UK and a couple of others as well. As we see uh, an onboard shot of this one just jumped over the clip. Heavy impact with the orange part, the end part of the Armco barrier there as uh, we perhaps get uh, even another look at it here. Watch this slow motion shot onto the gravel. Wait for the hop as we're just going to see it. Maybe I've mistimed my commentary here. There we go, up and into the air. And landing, these cars, they don't really like that amount of load going through the suspension. Doing the awesome. best Gene Wilder impression, doing the kangaroo. I, w I was thinking, let's keep it motorsport themed, do Mark Webber or even uh, Vitaly Petrov. Uh, if you remember the M Malaysian Grand Prix, Vatili Petrov went and did a big jump in uh, his Lotus uh, back a, a few year, number of years ago now uh, in Formula One. So uh, these cars are not exactly built for jumping, Randy, that's for sure. Yeah, they're definitely not. You need to be somewhat careful uh, with that. You know, you, you sort of pick the right sides up off some of the, uh, well, either side on some of these big curves. But uh, my main worry is if anyone on the, in the chat is even going to be old enough to get my Gene Wilder uh, reference. <laughs> I'll tell you, well, I got your Gene Wilder re reference. I just chose to ignore it. Um, like I said, <laughs> if anyone in the chat is going to be old enough. <laughs> As, uh, I tell you what, look at this battle then. Fourth, fifth, and now sixth because look who's there at the back of this group. Mitchell de Jong here on those fresher tyres. He's going to look here, Connery, to the inside of the Parabolica. And you know what? White Gooden's done the right thing there. He said, you know what? Have the position. If you're that desperate for it, you can have it because I'll get the better run out the corner. And that's what he's trying to do. He used that slipstream. And those guys have actually been gaining on Dream Factory and also Jim Yellow as well. But you look at this. Those cars all in front of Mitchell here have not had tyre stop. Mitchell has had a tyre stop, and look at how close he is. He's going to jump these by a country mile here, Connery. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely huge as uh, NRS kind of sense for. A little bit of a sandwich there between those two BMWs coming through the Redfield chicane, but now Mitchell can focus on trying to chase down the Simicube Enex racing yellow car, and you're absolutely right. Uh, these cars have been, at least over the last couple of laps, have been catching the lights uh, of uh, of Dream Factory and uh, the the uh, Gym Racing Yellow cars. So the Inex Racing Yellow, Gym Racing Yellow, both the same color, but uh, one in front of the other. That's the Gym Racing team currently trying to follow Dream Factory for P number two, but uh, they've just been sitting pretty there, just doing the fuel saving game as with pretty much everyone throughout the rest of the field, except for that, perhaps, for that VRS kind of sensible car because they need positions, they need the track position to make this uh, make this strategy work. Randy, what are we expecting then? We're coming up to the final pit stop as here comes Mitchell down the inside of that other BMW up into fourth place. What are we expecting from these final pit stops? Where do we expect Mitchell de Jong to come out here because it's about 18 and a half seconds behind your leader, Justin Brunner. Runner takes tires. I think that Quintessence Sport car will take the lead. Mac Packham will likely be behind the wheel. They'll probably have about a seven to eight second lead, give or take. Depends on sort of how they get on the pit road, and really it depends on their fuel delta because Mitchell would not have been doing any fuel saving through the second stint. They're probably going to have to come down maybe a little bit early, and they're likely going to have to fill that tank all the way to the brim. I also expect Mac Packham 
get behind the wheel of that car is him and Philip Stam, who have logged into the server. Anyone who knows those names knows that Mac Backham would be the driver you go with 100% of the time in that situation. So I expect Mac to get in the car. I expect them to come out potentially with the race lead. But I expect that that NX Racing Blue Machine, who's going to be getting into that car? I expect they will be skipping tires. And it'll either be Jake Sergios or Simon Cattell. Could either could really go with either of those drivers, to be honest. I think they'll likely come out somewhere around P2, maybe P3, depending on some sort of crazy strategy. And I think that in all likelihood, they'll probably have the pace and will likely spend a mo majority of the stint chasing down Mac. And I think they'll end up being able to make that pass happen. Don't forget, you can keep up to date with everything going on in this race. Just check out racebot.tv forward slash timing. Keep up to date with everything. If, if we're not focusing on your favourite team, you'll be able to keep an eye on how they're getting on. Look at the lap times, look at the pit stops. You'll be able to see also uh, when there's change of drivers, when there's uh, pit stops made. Everything going on there. Just check it out, racebot.tv forward slash timing. And uh, also get social with us as well. It's Facebook and Twitter, we're on use the hashtag iRacingWCS and uh, tweet at RealVRS to uh, get involved with that set social media and uh, yeah, we're heading towards the final third of the race here we're heading towards the final pit stop of the race as well that battle for second place they're slowing each other down you feel as uh, they're allowing Mitchell De Young to catch up to them. Their lap times have been in the 148-0, 1. Mitchell De Young's last lap was a 147-3. In fact, we're coming across the line now. 48-2, 48-0, and a 47-2 for Mitchell De Young. And the third car, he's gaining on second and third place in this one as Wyatt Gooden and uh, Kei Kashube swap positions then further down sixth and seventh place have swapped positions into turn number one there currently yep they have so as goes online well that that was actually more of the uh more of the newer tires coming into the into effect there uh for keiko shube so why good not gonna uh, battle that one too much and i can expect uh, the rest of these cars ahead apart from mitchell to not fight too much with kashube here so i expect kashube to get past the next racing yellow pretty quickly but then with the pace that uh, that that 33 car has i wouldn't be surprised if he tries to drag himself up to the back of mitchell and give him a hard time i'll tell you what you made a very good point there okay kashube did take they did take tires in that team 33 car and uh, that means that they're on that fresher tyres, but Kay did jump into the car at the end of that first stint. So as he makes the move now up ahead of that NX Racing Yellow BMW, that's up to fifth place for that Team 33 car. I wouldn't be surprised if that Team 33 car... Oh, it's Mitchell Ooh. de Jong. He's, he's taking to his rallycross uh, his rally crosses and <laughs> adventures there on the exit of the Ascari chicane. But... Um, Kashube, he's in he's in with a shout of the win here, Randy. Definitely is. Kei Kashube is doing some very impressive lap times. He is three tenths of a second quicker than Mitchell Dion in that last trip around. So that's a team that we need to keep an eye on. And we got first team to really blink up around the front. Wyatt Good and Radicals online. They come down pit road. This is four minutes shy of the hour. They're going to have to do something like an hour and two minutes on that tank of fuel. So Radicals, if you, what you want to do right now for these guys, you want to come down pit road. You want to take a full tank of fuel and you want to take tires. You want to extend this pit stop as long as you can so you can spend as little time on the racetrack as possible because you want that fuel to go the entire way and you're going to have to do a lot of fuel saving why it gets out of that car and it's going to be zach thomas who's going to run that car for the final stint so the first uh, of our race leaders sort of to blink here next i think we're going to probably expect i would not be surprised if koanda sinsport that number uh, eight car with mitchell de Jong, is likely going to pit a lap or two earlier than that race uh, leading car of nx racing blue likely due to the fact that mitchell's been pushing so hard and is pretty much going to be struggling, I think, with the fuel economy. I'll tell you what, he's doing a fantastic job, though, as he's now clamped onto the back of the second and third place battle. And he doesn't want to get held up by these two too much because even a second lost here and there is, in fact, <laughs> the, the 59 car just goes, oh, go ahead, Mitchell, nope. you're, faster. you're faster than us. Go ahead. You're, you're, you've got a different strategy working there. 
but this is this is where a second lost here could end up affecting the uh, end result here for that uh, VRS Quentin Simsport car, Connery, because it's going to be that close towards the end with the fresher tyres for that uh, NX Racing Blue car, Justin Brunner. It is going to be pretty close because, well, we've got a gap of what looks like 15 seconds from VRS Quentin Simsport number 8 to your race leader right now. They'll get disposed of Dream Factory here, coming down the pit straight, and uh, uh, Diego Catalan, uh, he's going to not easily let by Mitchell De Jong at, at this stage, but uh, down onto the brakes. He will try to fight it on the outside, but the thing is, there's only so much that he can do on those older tyres, so that's Mitchell through for VRS Grand Simsport. We've also got Keiga Shube, team number 33, behind as well, looking to get himself through as quickly as Mitchell got through. Jim Racing Missouri is on to pit road. Mario Bertolotti is going to jump out of that car here and uh, they're making their final pit stop of the day. Just coming up to an hour and one minute remaining in this one. So, uh, yeah, definitely going to be uh, an interesting race finish, that's for sure. And Monza has had historic uh, race finish as it had one of the closest ever race finishes in Formula One. Not the closest because four ever. Four cars motorsport. within a second, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, I think it was uh, half a tenth of a second between the first two. Uh, so it was won by a nose. I think was the official. Good luck result. timing that in the 1960s. <laughs> yeah, it was Jackie Stewart who won that one as well. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it's it's got history of of these close finishes. And right now, Mitchell De Jong, you look at the lap times that he's putting in here compared to your race leader, Justin Brunner. We're going to keep an eye on Justin Brunner now, see whether he comes onto pit road. And the answer's not no. this time. So he's going to stay out. And this is important, Randy, because the, the longer that he goes out, this is uh, going to help him with that final pit stop time. Definitely could be. Is Let's see what Mitchell De Jong is going to do. I think he's likely to swing right past pit entry as well. And indeed, that's going to be the plan. So... No one else out in front going to hit pit road just yet. Let's take a look at some of the other cars a little bit deeper down. Lenderman's going to go by that pit entry. and see who else. Uh, Seb Job, everyone is pretty much not. So everyone except that uh, that Radicals car deciding that pit, time, pit stop time, not quite yet. But every single time they cycle past, we get closer and closer. And really, I think at this point, everyone should be able to make it on fuel except that Radicals car because going to be a long stint they're likely going to have to go full fuel save mode they might be able to do it but they don't have josh chin on their team so good luck with that one <laughs> trust master mavano red have jumped onto pit road now for their final pit stop and tomaso carla is jumping in to the car here so uh, they're making their final pit stop along with jim racing black and also a couple others as well the vrs quanda sim spot number 18 car is onto pit road as well as also the pure racing team black car they're on pit road bad owl sim racing as well we've not really spoken about them all race they're onto pit road as well to make their final pit stop so uh, definitely the, you've got the start of this pit strategy now coming into play Justin Brunner, we're keeping an eye on, I'm keeping an eye on him as he's heading down the back pit str uh, down the back straightaway. He's actually getting overtaken by one of the back markers at the moment, heading into the Parabolica. Round the final corner, will we see him duck off to the right? He's holding over to the right-hand side, so we expect the race leader onto pit road this time. Bye, here he comes then, onto pit road. Final pit stop, and that NX Racing blue car, this is so important for that car to be able to get such a perfect stop here. We've got 58 minutes Mitchell remaining did. in this one. And so too, there you go. Mitchell De Jong into the pit Dream road. Crucially three. though, crucially though, Team 33 stay out of pit road, stay out of pit road so too, to Jim Racing Yellow. So they're gonna go a lot longer still in this one. How this one goes, Jake Sturgis jumping into the car for that Inex Racing blue car. Mitchell De Jong onto pit road. They're going to make their uh, driver change here as well. You expect it to happen. There you go. Matt Beckham jumping in. And, uh, well, we've seen that group of cars that stayed out longer at the first stop. They're staying out longer again at this second stop here. But, Randy, this is all about getting you everything absolutely spot on for this pit stop here. It really is. I'm watching this the next car to see if they're going to go for the triple stint. 
Inspect the tires. They are indeed. They're not going to take tires in this race. So because of that, VRS going to Simsport will not come out with the race lead. That is very important. And Mac Backham is now going to have to pick up time. But he is going to be on slightly new tires. He is not going to take tires as well. He is out and away with the double stint here. We also have NX Yellow behind in the BMW. Who's it that got on that car? That's William Levesque. He's going to be doing a triple stint as well. So triple stints are plenty here up near the front. But it's going to be Mac Backham who needs to try to chase down that McLaren being driven driven by Jake Sturgis. This is going to be an interesting one. I think a lot of people would likely pick Mac to have the speed over Jack, or excuse me, over Jake, and he is going to have the tire advantage. So will that Audi be able to reel in that McLaren? It's important to note at the end of the stint, Mitchell was lapping about a second a lap quicker than that McLaren. And you look at this, then Matt Backham, 13.5 seconds behind, out the pit stops there behind Jake Sturgis. It's how how these guys get up to speed and how they're able to use those tires and to use the car to their advantage as uh, Keke Shube onto pit road now from the race lead team 33 uh, down on the lane and with other cars not taking tires you would imagine that that team 33 car would perhaps take tires here Connery but maybe they've seen what's happened there and think they took the tires at the last stop yeah, yeah they, they did sorry yeah, yeah they did double. so yeah it's a double stick so um yeah, Connery, we've got a race finish on our hands here. <laughs> yeah, we weren't expecting this. We weren't expecting so many people to go on to the, uh, the triple stint strategy, taking no tires over the entirety of this race. So now this is a showdown between uh, those double stinters and the, the three stinters. And I think if you're double stinting the tires, you're going to still have fresher tires on this stint as well. So that margin for the race lead is going to keep coming down, keep coming down uh, as Mitchell de Jong puts in those fast lap times on still fresher tyres than uh, that McLaren of, uh, of what is going to be Enix Blue. So this is going to be very, very interesting indeed. Shube out of the pits. Here comes the VRS Quantum Sim Spot, Karamat Backham. And I tell you what, Kashube has jumped Backham yeah. here. So staying out that little bit longer has helped them there. And they're both on comparable tyres as well here, Randy. And uh, Keke Shube, Team 33, they're in the strongest position, you would imagine, here. They're in a really good spot for sure. And keep in mind that that Mercedes was the quickest at the end of the stint of all cars on track. Keke Shube was circulating about three tenths per lap quicker than Mitchell was. So that Mercedes has pace, and Keke Shube's been in the car for an hour. Going to be a little bit warmed up as you see him fight with that Mercedes going up and over the curb through the second chicane. Old tires getting out there on a heavy uh, fuel load is going to make things relatively difficult. But now the chasing begins because that McLaren has typically not been good on its tires over the course of long races. We've seen that in the past in this series. We've seen uh, that it tends to struggle. It was sort of one of the, old, the, the fallbacks for the car last season, even though it was overall the best. Uh, and certainly in, in the hands of core sim racing and Frederick Rassi Houston, it was really good. But it has slightly lower downforce trim, and that means it's going to use the rubber a little bit more harshly than that Mercedes and the Audi will. So this is going to be an interesting 30-some-odd lap sprint to the end because even though the gap looks relatively large, about 10 to 15 seconds is, I think, what it roughly is, I would expect that's going to come down, and it's likely going to be nothing with about 10 laps to go. Jim Racing Yellow are on pit road now for their final pit stop as here comes just, uh, I was going to say Justin Brunner and Jake Sturgis completing his first lap, uh, first flying lap out the pits. A 48-3 for Sturgis there. We'll keep an eye on Matt Backham's times because uh, Keg Shubi has just had his pit stop. Matt Backham, 48-2. So only one-tenth of a second quicker as Jim are still on pit road and they're taking tyres as well. So uh, they've got a long pit stop for this final pit stop here. So they're going to drop down positions here. But it's this front three here. Don't count out William Levesque as well in that BMW. He's just behind them as well in fourth place. We've got a race in our hands. Radicals online after all these pit stops. Zach Thomas, sixth place. But look behind him. He's got Martin Solari in that gym racing white car. He's got Glacier North, who you would imagine owes one more pit stop here in this race because they've gone for the three-stop strategy. Those three battling it out. Sixth, seventh, and eighth place on track at the moment. It's heading into the second chicane. Della Roggia through the left, through the right, abuse the curbs. Three BMWs all together here. And that Glacier car 
it needs to get past here, Connery, for that that three stop to have any effect here in this race. Yeah, they are definitely racing on the back foot with the strategy. So it's fascinating to see we had zero stop. Uh, well, we had uh, zero stint, uh, one <laughs> one stint and two stint uh, cars on, in this field right now as he looks for the outside line coming into Ascari, making it three wide, but decides against it as Jim is going. Jim racing white. Uh, there is just going to have to stay behind, but a slow entry to the Ascari Chicane Glacier North right over their rear bumper, their rear bumper there, but still not able to capitalize on anything. Uh, is uh, Rich Vanimi there? And he's not even going to have a look coming down into the Parabolica either. So some chances going begging here for Glacier, and they really need to be taking these chances because of the strategy they put themselves on. Yeah, absolutely. And well, looking at your leaders then, your leader, Jake Sergios, a 48-2, Keg Shubi in second place, 48-0, Piers Quentin Sims, Fulton Macbackham, a 48-1, Inex Racing Yellow, 48-5, as here comes that Glacier car down the inside. Is he going to get both cars into the first chicane? Yes, he is. Into the Retophilia. I thought he might have gone a little bit deep there, though. He's going to be slower on the exit, but lighter car is the new fastest lap for Jack Sedgwick, 146.7. Oh, what a, what might have been for him in this race, considering the uh, technical issues that he'd had in this one. But uh, looking at this battle now, so uh, Glacier up into that sixth place, but they always a pit stop in this one. So too does Inex Racing Red with Jack Sedgwick. So um, those two. Jack Sedgwick actually in 10th place at the moment. But as I say, owing us that one final pit stop. Wani Lopez as well in that Van Devil Sim Racing yellow car was another one of the three stop cars there down in 20th place, owing us a final pit stop. So it's not been the best of days for that Van Devil car. But Randick, looking at those lap times, Jack Sedgwick doing a good job at the moment of uh, keeping those lap times at a manageable pace. Doing good for now, but question's gotta be is can he keep that pace up? Because we saw the pace really fall through the floor for that McLaren after a handful of laps. And when he would have came down pit road, those tires would have gotten nicely cooled off. He did the 48-1, which is pretty rapid considering the tires. Let's see what Kei Kashubi does as he starts his run towards start finish right here. That Team 33 car, he's gonna go to a 48-0, so still quicker. And Mac Backham goes to a 48-4. So the tired strategy for Kawanda does not seem to be panning out right now. Yeah, certainly not. And uh, Backham really uh, not liking it so far, it appears, for that uh, VRS Quentin Sims spot car, the number eight car, in third place. In terms of the championship, they're in a good spot, though. But uh, they have got the car behind, who did a, 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 a tenth and a half a lap faster that last oh, time. Oh, big I, wiggle from Jake out of the second chicane. Yeah, this is it now. He knows he's having to push it here, Conry. He knows he's having to really try and get everything extract every little ounce of uh, energy out of that car and out of those tires and just running that curb a little bit harsh there as we saw on the replay just kick that back end out and you don't want to be making a mistake on old tires you don't at all uh, you know even though you're pretty much starting to slide through these corners anyway on the old tires once you get past that sort of angle where you can save the car. It's going to be very, very difficult for you to try and keep it on the grey stuff. But uh, still, just right now, just be, being a bit tenti tentative there, coming through the Ascari chicane. He knows that those tyres have to last now until the end of this race, but he's got to keep in mind Keiga Shube, 10.4 seconds behind and closing in little bit by little bit right now, but the main objective for Sturgis now is he has to keep those tyres alive. He can't afford them to drop off the cliff. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be how it goes for that final 30 minutes of this race as to what happens here. And uh, this is going to be uh, a really interesting finish to the race. Glacier North, by the way, caught up to the back of Klaus Kivikas in that number one VRS Quenda Sim Spot car. So Glacier North, as I say, they always a pit stop yet for that three-stop strategy. But at the moment, they're getting a bit of uh, airtime here. They're doing a good job as they're coming up alongside. And I bet Klaus will have been told by his team, don't fight too much with that car. They're not they're not racing us. Let them by, use their slipstream to get a bit of uh, extra speed and a bit of uh, not so much fuel saving at this point in the stage. Although 
saying that, the will, that Audi will still need to do a little bit of fuel saving here today, Randy, uh, with that uh, weight penalty. We keep on bringing up that weight penalty, but 40 kilograms, it is it is a significant amount to be carrying around extra compared to the other cars. Back. It is, it is a little big. bit off. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry there. Yeah, Mac Backham having a couple of issues getting through the the De La Roja chicane there. I think he clipped the curb just a little bit too much. That's that second curb, just unsettled. Car had to take a bit of a trip through the gravel there, but uh, that's just showing like how how much on the ragged edge he is right now, trying to draw himself back up to Team 33 and in X Racing Blue. He knows what's on the line. Yeah, certainly is. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, uh, Randy, well, let's go back to the point we were, we were going to make before uh, Mac was giving us a little bit of a worry there. Um, that 40 yeah, before kilogram... we were rudely interrupted by Mac. Yeah. <laughs> that 40 kilogram weight penalty, the, that balance of performance adjustment, it has shown, it's shown a little bit in this race here with those Audis. But when you get away from a track like this, when you go to Nürburgring, for example, next the next race is at Nürburgring, what sort of effect will it have there? Because Monza seems to almost exacerbate it because you're on the throttle for so long and because you've got some long radius corners as well as really slow corners where you're having to brake and then accelerate with that extra weight. It's it's sort of an interesting one. It, it's because it, Monza's a weird track to really judge the BOP, in my opinion, because it's going to be the best track in McLaren. And with, you know, like you said, it, it's, it's going to make things difficult for the fuel economy because that extra weight does make quite a big a difference in the terms of how long you can go on a stint. So I think the, the real first test of the balance of performance is likely going to come from the Nürburgring. But the thing to keep in mind is that the Audis, even with that 40 kilograms, and drivers I know are complaining about it, a couple of the drivers I spoke to, one of which was from Coanda, were not too particularly happy about the BOP, and I know some others as well are really complaining that the BOP is sort of hampering everything. Well, we had every car within a second in qualifying, and there's still Audis running up near the pointy end of the field. So I think right now the, 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 the BOP is working decently well, and I'm honestly decently satisfied with it. As, uh, well looking at this gap at the front four tenths of a second was taken out by Kei Kishubi on the last lap and uh, I, I feel that that Mercedes because it, it has maybe been working its tyres a little bit better in that first first run of this uh, double stint of these tyres it's really starting to come into play now Connery as I say four tenths of a second faster on that last lap the lap before was 3.38 uh, of a second faster we're going to look at the lap times here Jake Stegios across the line of 48.259 for Jake. Let's compare that. Cake Shube across the line, time in the line now. And it's a 47.842, another four tenths of a second come out. That's These tyres now are starting to uh, assure for, uh, for Jake Stegios here, Connery. Yeah, they are. The times are starting to drop a little bit, even though they are very, very quick lap times, at least uh, when you when you look at the mid-pack times, even on, you know, even on three stint old tires, he's still running faster than the, the vast majority of your mid-pack. So that's how quick Sturgis is running, but it's not quick enough right now to hold back the charging Kei Kishube. Neither is it uh, enough to hold back uh, Mac Bapcom once he gets uh, himself sorted uh, with some good couple of clear air laps there as uh, Team 33 Kei Kishube had to deal with a little bit of lap traffic there. That was Madison Down of that VRS Trans Tasman racing car. Uh, that Ferrari getting well, well out of the way, just okay. But the closest like battle out there on circuit right now is that VRS kind of sense sport one versus Jim Racing White. Yep, certainly is at the moment uh, that close battle. Jack Sturgis has uh, Jack Sturgis. Jack Sedgwick has made his uh, final pit stop here for Inex Racing Red, but um, yeah, certainly. Yeah, not been a good day for that uh, Red car after the earlier technical problems that they suffered in this race but um, yeah looking at that battle then um, between the uh, VRS Quantum Sim Spot Klaus Kivakas and Jim Racing White both cars same amount of uh, well one lap less for Jim White they lapped uh, pitted one lap later there but um, certainly that uh, Jim car will be looking after its size a little bit better you would imagine with it being the BMW with it having that extra downforce here 
around it and they're able to uh, just push that car just that little bit more in this final stint here. It's another BMW on pit road. It's that Glacier North car with their final stop in this three-stop strategy. And you're going to see him fall through the order here. It's going to be a pretty quick stop, though, Let's, if we just keep track of that pit stop time. I think they're likely going to be on the lane here for probably about 15 to 20 seconds, maybe 25, but it's not going to be very long. Still waiting. We're still waiting. Should be fuel only as well, by the way, just on top of that as the cars just continue to cycle through. Gap, by the way, for your race lead has now clocked in at under 10 seconds. So KK should be doing a good job reeling in Sturgis out there with that race lead. Still waiting on this Glacier North car. And for email, last name I'm not even going to attempt. Just waiting for him to come off of pit road here. He's actually a longer thought than I thought it would be. 34 seconds for that BMW, and he rolls away. But looking at a lot of time still, Keiko Shibi is cycling through at three-tenths of a second per lap quicker every time by. And this is also relevant because this would be, I think, the first repeat winner for an event that we've had because the season opener of this championship back in 2016 was won by Husingfeld Core Motorsports would pretty much be the same exact roster of drivers. Alexander Voss drove in that team. Kei Kishubi at that time did not, but they won the season opener here at Monza two years ago, and they're looking, I think, to be the first team to repeat. Yeah, they certainly are looking at By the way, I, the attempt that I would give it is uh, Emil uh, Ritt van Neme, is what I would say. I don't know about you, Connery, for the uh, Glacier driver. Well, I, you know, my, my past experiences of trying to pronounce Polish names haven't very, gone very well at all. I think the Glacier racing guys will uh, tell you all about that one. But, so I'm not even going to attempt. At least we're doing a better attempt at it than uh, Cam Walsh uh, throwing him under the bus there. <laughs> he would he would fit Ford GT in that name somehow. <laughs> yeah, he would, to be fair. Um, we're still keeping an eye on this uh, battle between Co uh, VRS Quanda Simspot and Jim Racing GTR Centre White as here comes Solari to the inside, across the line they go once again. BMW versus Audi. Two German marks into the brakes for the first chicane, the uh, Retifilio. And through goes Solari then, up into fifth place for Jim Racing White. Good race for them so far today. They did start the race in 20th place, so you've seen how some of these strategies have worked out and uh, also instants as well that have uh, panned out. And just looking at your, uh, your standings, only four cars out of the top ten actually started in the top ten here, and um, really, it's, it's, it's only really the uh, Inex Racing Blue car that's, uh, start, uh, that's not changing the position. It started in first, and it's still in first now, but for how long here, Randy? Because uh, Team 33 is just gaining on that car all the way along, and we've got just under 40 minutes remaining in this race. It's, it's going to be a tight one, isn't it? It's, you know, 40 minutes left or so once they get to start finish, and that Team 33 car is running really, really quick right now. Um, but last time, the Sturgios did a good job on the lap time. They did a 48-192, so to keep it within about two tenths is, I think, what Sturgios needs to do to try to maintain this lead best he can. This time he cycles through to a 48-275. Can K. Kashubi go even quicker? Meanwhile, Mac Backham has pretty much just fallen backwards and has become almost uh, irrelevant. 47-8 for K. Kashubi, so a little under four tenths of a second is what he's going to reel in that time through. And I think that's the sort of gap that K needs to reel in to sort of really make this possible and bring this gap down very quickly. So it's just a couple tenths per lap that these two drivers are really struggling. We know that K is going to be quicker, but what Jake needs to just try to do is make sure it's that gap is as minimal as possible. He's done a good job of it thus far. I think it's showing just how much that Audi is struggling now and this is a double stint of tyres you look at the McLaren that is now on a triple stint of tyres and they're doing comparable lap time so it just goes to show that maybe that uh, that weight and also how the Audi is having to use the tyres as well today has really affected them here and uh, Matt Backham not able to gain on that Inex Racing blue car compared to the Mercedes, which don't forget has had a, a balanced performance adjustment as well. Five kilograms extra uh, put onto that Mercedes. So it's not that it's, um, it's been left alone. That's had a little adjustment as well, Connery. But uh, that Mercedes doing a fantastic job here so far. We'll look back, actually, because uh, you've got uh, Pure Racing. Well, I'm having a look further down because it's Pure Racing Team Red and FA Racing G2 Logitech. 
they're, they're the two joint championship leaders, and somehow, considering that um, Pure Race Team Red were in the wall at the end, at the start of the race, and then spun around at the Parabolica a couple of laps later, are in 14th place here, Connery, ahead of their championship rivals, who have had a pretty nondescript race today, yeah. that has to be said. Yep, they haven't really had too many problems. They did have a little bit of an incident earlier on because uh, they did look like there's a little bit of damage to the front end of that car, a little bit of damage to the rear end of that car, especially to the rear diffuser. So that is not really a part of the car that you want to get damaged. You get a lot of your downforce uh, from that rear diffuser. So it, it could be a little bit of a lack of pace as a result of that damage, but uh, you've got to give credit to PRT Reds. But exactly as you said, they were spun around on the exit of the first chicane on the first lap had to wait for the entirety of the field to pass them and, and now look at where they where they are looking to score what is decent points dream factory battling away pure racing team yellow down the inside into turn number one and uh, raul diego diego making that move stick up into ninth place for dream factory good racing from those today and uh, where did they start? They started in 11th place, so they're up two positions in this one today. And uh, those guys really put on a, a good display from them today. We've not really seen them much this season around it. Uh, getting involved, I believe they got involved in the shenanigans at the start of the last race. But here today, ninth place, good solid position for them, for them to build on for the rest of the series. Yeah, it's been a decent run for them today here. So they... You know, I think you're right. I think they got caught up in that issue at Sebring. Granted, a lot of teams got caught up in that. Um, so, for team is still working to move their way forward. And I'm still just watching this battle for the race lead and watching those that gap fall. It's down to 8.2 seconds. And I think it's going to tick under 8 seconds at the end of this lap. As Nate's going to cycle through. Did he just run the same lap two laps in a row? No, he did not. I take that back. That's just me not being doing a very good job. But uh, Kei Kashimi goes to a 47.7. So a quick lap from K there means that gap comes down a lot, lot more. So still watching this gap really uh, come down is what I'm pretty much focusing on. Yeah, 35 minutes remaining in this one. So we've got just over one sixth of this race remaining. And we're seeing that Team 33 car gaining all the time in this final stint here. The uh, VRS Quanda Simspot car of number eight of Matt Backham is pretty much not able to keep up with them and is losing out. Thrustmaster Mavano Red has made it past the Radicals Online car, so up to seventh place for Thrustmaster Mavano Red ahead of Radicals Online. That's Tommaso Carla and Zach Thomas changing position there. Further down in your top ten, further down in your field, TTL Esports, uh, Dylan Sharman. They've been having a bit of a nightmare today of TTL Esports. They're in 17th, they're behind that Teo Martin Esports car uh, of uh, Alvaro Ramiro. And they're battling away into that first chicane. Pretty close together as well, it must be said, between those two. But uh, TTL, Connery, they'll be disappointed with today. They were starting up in sixth place, and they're down there, down in 17th place right now. Yeah, exactly, and well, they had their early issues, and I think there's Tio Martin Sports just not challenging, coming down in towards the, into the uh, Little Roger chicane, I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a little bit of a fall from grace here for TTL Esports, of course they won uh, at Bathurst uh, with, uh, well, most of that was uh, due to the help of Joshua Rogers, let's just, uh, let's just be honest about that one. But uh, over the past two races here at Monza and also at Sebring, they just haven't really been there. And I think, again, it's just an issue with the, the, the depth of the roster that they have. They basically have the star driver of Josh Rogers and then everyone else I don't think is at his level. Uh, good teamwork from Pure Racing team to get the blue car in between them and the FA Racing car of Isaac Price. And uh, Max Fennig now holding an inside line. It's not going to make it easy for Isaac Price to get past, that's for sure. But Isaac Price, new tyres though, should be relatively easy to, for him to make the pass on that uh, Pure Racing Team blue car as they head on to the pit straight once again. And, uh, well, across the line they go between them and Isaac Price will uh, duck out to the outside, you would imagine. Here he goes. To make that move, 
into turn number one, but that blue car is staying there. It's going to compromise his entry and contact between them is there. Just a half spin there. Isaac Price will be fuming in that car. Kicks the back end onto the dirt. We'll get a replay of that, I'm sure, because I do think that there was just the slightest hint of contact between the two of them there, Randy. I think that was Isaac's fault though. Max Winnig was on the full right-hand side of the circuit. So if Isaac Price is fuming, he's got no one else to be mad at than himself as he did not have complete, uh, he really cut across the nose of that pure racing team cart. So unfortunate for Isaac, but it was his own doing there in my opinion. As we'll uh, look on board actually from the, uh, the pure racing team blue car of Max Winnig. Here he is. And Isaac just doesn't quite give enough space, does he? Does that blue car just track out just a little bit? We don't, well, that's for uh, any uh, post-race um, stewards to have a look at, that's for sure. We get one final look from the uh, aerial coverage, of course, brought to you by Anwen Designs. And, uh, well, away you go. And uh, Isaac Price, 1.4 seconds behind now in that battle, so uh, he's not going to be enjoying himself that much. Look at your race lead battle, by the way. Jake Sturgeos, 48-2, compared to a 47-8. That last lap here, so Keiko Shube still reeling him in here. And the question is, Connery, how much longer before K gets that slipstream? Because he's starting to run out of time. We've got 31 minutes remaining in this race. Yeah, and that looks like, uh, by my current calculations, about 17 and a half laps to go. So he has a little bit of time to work with here, but uh, you know, at, at this current rate, it won't be until what five laps, well, even less than five laps before, uh, to, you know, before the end, where he'll be in a position to be able to challenge that in racing blue car. And you got to add to that the issue that he has right now, which is he's got a couple of bits of lap traffic separating himself and the race leader as well. You've got SRT Esports and you've got Ben Sim Racing Yellow as well to be concerned about. And uh, Randy did bring up the good point just now that Mac Backham in that VRS kind of Sim Sport number eight car has picked up the pace over the past couple of laps, but it, I think it's a little, you know, a little bit of a case of too little too late as uh, we're heading out for another lap once again. And uh, Kashube has got a couple of lap traffic between him and Jake Sturgis across the line to go again. Sturgis, 148-1, that's a little bit better from him on that lap, whereas Kashube 47-8, and uh, Matt Backham, 47-9. So, um, yeah, as you say, picking up that pace just that little bit, but it might it's just too late, I think, from, uh, from Backham to be picking up the pace right now but we're under the half hour mark now just 30 uh, 29 minutes and 46 seconds remaining in this one round it when are we reckoning then when do you reckon that they're uh, they're gonna get to each other uh probably with about 10 minutes to go to be honest because I, I think this is going to be a thing that ends up growing i think that mclaren every single lap that goes by it's likely to get slightly worse and slightly worse on the tires so every single time we circle around this racetrack i think that that mclaren is going to slow down just a little bit and i think that mercedes even though it'll be having the same sort of effect the fact that those tires are one hour newer i think it's going to you know pretty much pay off to their expect if mac backham can somehow find some speed in the audi he might be able to make something of this as well but he's seven seconds down the road from that team 33 machine so it's 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 going to be a move it's going to be a pass it's going to be decided i think within the last hour if that team 33 car can even get there i, I, I would be hoping that it's done within the last hour um, last 10 <laughs> minutes excuse me <laughs> You see, you pick me up on mistakes. I'll pick you up on mistakes as well. I had to wake up at 5 <laughs> in the morning. You have no excuse. Um, by the way, Pure Racing Team Blue have had to uh, give up a position in the end to Isaac Price. He uh, just had a bit too much speed for him, and that's meant that they've moved up into 14th place now for the FA G Racing G2 car. But they have lost out. Look at that now. 4.3 seconds behind Pure Racing Team Red. So all of that, sh that uh, shenanigans and that mistake has cost them big in that battle against their championship rivals here in this series today. You are, of course, watching the Virtual Racing School GTI Racing World Championship Series here on iRacing Live. Brought to you by Racebot TV. 
keep up to date with everything going on this race check out live timing racebot.tv forward slash timing for everything that's going on keep an eye on those lap times as we're heading in towards the end of this race and also uh, get social with us as well who do you think's going to uh, take the win in this one who do you think's going to take uh, the final uh, positions in that top 10 top 12 positions because there's some battling going on further down as well between the two gym cars but uh, you, I say that the uh, the 11th place gym car on fresher ties you would imagine will be there just dragging that uh, the, the number 44 car along between those guys as well so yeah let us know what you think uh, is going to happen in this one but uh, yeah certainly been an intriguing race an intriguing strategy fight and I tell you what Keg Shubay's just lost down a little bit of time here, Connery, on that last lap. He only gained about two tenths of a second. <laughs> so um, that gap, that lap delta difference has it's just come down a little bit in that last lap. Yeah, as he's starting to hit a little bit of traffic here, the traffic I mentioned before, SRT Esports and Vendaval Sim Racing Yellow, he could, you know, he in some, some situations, you can actually use this to your advantage to just get those slingshots uh, down the straights here. So make sure you catch them on the straights or rather than in the corners. That's the ideal situation that Kegashube is looking for right now. He will get the effect of the draft from this far back just to get, uh, you know, improving his straight line speed all the way down this pit straight. And now he's got a hope that he doesn't get caught behind either of these Audis coming through the chicane. Yeah, that'll be uh, the hook for him. He'll be hoping that they're compliant with him when he comes to make the moves in the back markers. And uh, that gap at the front now is down to under six seconds. It's 5.8 seconds between your front two of this race. That gap just continues to reduce here as Kashube bounces over those curbs at the De La Roja. You've got to be careful because if you take too much of the curbs there, Randy, you end up with uh, a corner-cutting penalty that iRacing automatically applies if you do take too much of the curbs. Do you need to be a little bit careful there? But I think the main worry for Kei Kashubi right now is getting around this traffic because these two cars are fighting for position between Luca and Juan Lopez. It's Vendaval and SRT Esport. SRT is going to pull out of the slipstream. That's going to allow Kei Kashubi to go up the inside into Ascari. But while they're giving him the line, they're not exactly ducking off the throttle a little bit early. Kei is going to cut, be able to cut back into the racing line, though. So this first car down, he'll have Juan Lopez. He'll have to deal with here in a couple moments. But Jake Sturgis, last trip, last trip around the racetrack, Track, the fuel was burned off of that car. It's actually done the opposite of what I thought it was going to do. He did a 48-0 that last trip around where Kei Kachibi did a 47-7. If Jake would have done one of his typical lap times, a 2 or a 3, that would have been pretty much a big gain for Kei Kachibi. But luckily for Jake, he managed to put together a phenomenal lap to bring that lap time down. And let's see what he does this time through. Another 48-0. This is going to be an 0-3-1. So that McLaren has gotten quicker over the course oh. of this stint. And Kei Kachibi goes to a 5. Yeah, look at that 47-5. So... Uh, He's really uh, used that slipstream to his advantage of that uh, Audi in front of him, Audi behind him as well. So even though he was compromised into the Ascari chicane, he's still able to pull out enough of 4.4 of a second out of that lead. 5.3 seconds is your lead at the moment. And uh, don't forget, back markers in this series, they don't have to move out the way with the blue flags. The blue flags, they're just advisories. It's just to let you know that there is a car about to put a lap on you there. As uh, Pure Racing Team Blue, they've had an incident. They're slow, and it's on the exit. This is yeah, Scary Chicane. And hopefully we'll get a look at that because Max Venig hit the curb on the inside of the exit. The chicane got it all wrong into the barrier on one side, lost control of the car, and into the barrier on the other side, Connery. That's a big incident, and that's possibly the biggest incident bar the, uh, the opening lap incident at the start. Yeah, it's very rare that you see people uh, actually go fully off there. You can see people go wide off onto the uh, off onto the uh, the paved runoff there, but uh, not so wide that they actually go into the gravel and into the grass there. So, Venig, that is going to be a very very damaged race car for him, and I'd be very surprised if uh, uh, he didn't get some form of meatball flag for that one, since it was very very hard into the Amco barrier that he went. So. Uh, but the thing is that uh, that Audi isn't front engine, so even though he went into it with the front of the car, that engine should be okay. Should be okay indeed. Uh, Pure Racing Team Yellow, by the way, have got to the back of that Radicals Online car. 
They're putting the pressure on that BMW. They want that ninth place. Does the uh, PRT yellow cap? Just a couple of tenths between them as they go through the Ascari chicane. That's where the BMW does have just that slight bit of an advantage with the downforce of that BMW, but it's these straights now. That's where the Audi just has that slight advantage, plus the slipstream there as well from being behind and into the Parabolica. That BMW took a very abrupt entry into it. It's compromised its line through the Parabolica there, but able to get the wider line run out the corner, but it's down the straight here. Use that slipstream here. TTL Esports, they are having issues as well by the looks of things, but it's still this battle for ninth place that will keep focused on here. Down the inside goes Mark Alkerman up into ninth place for that pure racing team yellow car. So again in position, and Randy, that last lap again, 47 4 for Kei Kashube. He definitely is. It was a very quick lap. It was somewhat assisted by the draft from Vendaval. Sort of caught Juani Lopez at the, the, the optimal time over the course of the lap, just coming out of the Ascari chicane, and Juan made it easy. So Jake Sturgios, he likely is going to be well aware of how that gap is coming down, is going to be pushing that McLaren to the absolute limit, the fight for ninth and 10th, and watching this Radicals car, though. I suspect this Radicals car is going to continue to fall through the field because we know that he is that Zach Thomas is fuel-saving to the max, and there are two hungry Jim Racing BMWs behind him, one being joined... Uh, driven by Jorge Blasco, the other one Dato Opkek. So the two of those cars I think will make short work of that radical BMW when they get a uh, long enough straightaway because Zach is lifting about 100 meters early into all these braking zones. Yeah, absolutely. We saw him come in uh, about an hour and three minutes remaining. So he's having to do extreme fuel saving in that radical's car. And uh, of course, uh, the uh, Jim Yellow car has got newer tyres as well. Going to look to the inside, down towards the Parabolica. And uh, there he goes, down the inside. And the other Jim Carr's going to follow him through. That's an opportunistic move there from the, uh, the Jim Black Cars. Up, up track, able to make the move. It was a bit of a late move from him, it must be said. But... Uh, you look at how much quicker he was into the braking zone there because of that radicals car having to lift and coast through there and uh, that means that that both gym cars up a position into uh, what's that 10th and 11th place for those two okay should be by the way that gap is 4.8 seconds but it was only about two tenths of a second corner he gained on that last lap because jake sturgis crucially now into the 47s himself it seems like Jake is immune to old tyres at this stage. A 47.9 on that last lap. That was what a couple of drivers had been running with newer tyres. Uh, and he is on, on tyres that have done what is going to be, after he comes across the line, 88 laps old. And we're only going to get uh, what is going to be about... Uh, we're looking to get 99 laps, so not quite the 100 laps uh, there to take us over this entry. But... Uh, Sturgios looking very comfortable right now. He has had a couple of issues getting the traction down off the corners, uh, well, especially coming out of the first chicane. But uh, apart from that, uh, it seems like the tyre wear is looking relatively good there on that on that Inex Racing McLaren, as it's a 48 flat last time by a 47.8 uh, for Kei Kashube in the number 33. I don't think this is going to happen for Kei. Randy, is it just me or is the Audi behind Kei distracting him a little? Well, it shouldn't be because Juan's not making any moves. What, what Juan did is when that Mercedes went by to put him in a lap down, remember that Juan Lopez is racing with that SRT eSport Audi behind? He's just tucked in and using the slipstream to help kind of spread that gap out. So for Kei be. I, I just think he just doesn't have the pace right now in the, Merce in the Mercedes. We know that the McLaren would be the quickest car here at Monza. It's got the highest top speed. It really is sort of the best car for this circuit. We've seen that pretty much all three years of this championship. Um, ironically enough, I don't think it's actually won any of those races. I think either bad luck or better drivers have sort of uh, reigned supreme. Oh, no, I take that back because Cora was in a McLaren last year. But the McLaren is super good here at Monza, and Jake Sturgios is doing a good job. I think he's probably used to, to old tires because him and his brother PJ, they've raced the likes of midgets and super modifieds in the past, and those are sorts of cars where you do not get new tires. So I think Jake's probably just used to having the old rubber uh, for about a one-hour sprint uh, in his uh, racing career, at least in the real life. As uh, well, 
we're heading towards the end of this race and 18 minutes remaining in this one and uh, still we're keeping an eye on how this one develops a gym battle is going on with pure racing team yellow now so elkman getting involved in the battle with the two gym cars that's 9th 10th and 11th as we come out the second lesmo heading down towards the uh, the ascara chicane once again they tried to make the move into the first chicane into the retifelio it didn't quite work out for the gym racing yellow car and that meant that uh, their teammate in the black car was able to just gain on them a little bit as they head well, out the Scarry chicane once again. Sorry, Randy. K just took six tenths out of NX. So this is, it's sort of a weird situation right now because Jake didn't slow down at all. Jake did a 48.097. He's been super consistent over this stint. The lap times has not very, very much over the last five to ten laps. There's a point where I think the car struggled on high fuel, but as it's burned off, the lap times for Jake have only gotten quicker and quicker. So maybe Kate Kashubi is finding a bit here in the super, super late stages of the stint. But if Kate can, can do those sorts of laps, because the only time we've seen him in the 47 Fords this stint was in Slipstream, he can do those sort of laps. He's in for a very, very, uh, I think, fun battle here towards the end of the race because it's now down under four seconds. But he has to keep it in that half tenth, about a half of a second, six tenths of a second gain every single lap. He can't reel Jake in, only being about two tenths or three tenths quicker every circuit around the track. As yet, we're headed into the closing stages of this race, then. It's uh, certainly... Uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to call this one. And you would imagine that if Keiko Shube does get there, the slightly newer cars, new cars, new tyres, should I say, they uh, they should give him the edge in that battle as we head on through the final quarter of an hour of the race here. As I say, as I've been saying all race, racebot.tv forward slash timing. Keep up to date with everything that's going on in this one. As we're coming down to the closing stages, you'll be able to see the difference in those uh, in those laps between the two cars. Jake Sturgis once again a 48-0-4-3. Keg Shube 47-7-1-0 across the line. They go. So that's enough for three tenths taken out by that Team 33 car. BRS Sim spot. they've dropped off the, uh, the, the battle really. They're nine seconds behind uh, Keg Shube now. So they're out of it in terms of the race win. But a podium is going to be a good position for them. Thrustmaster Bavana, Red, by the way, have been gaining on the VRS Quantum Simspot number one car for sixth place in this race, keeping an eye on those two as they're heading into the first chicane. So uh, definitely these two, uh, this battle's not over yet for the number one and number three car. Dream Factory in eighth place, not a bad run from them so far today and uh, they'll be enjoying themselves and uh, Jim Racing Yellow have made the move on Pure Racing Team Yellow. So the two, uh, two cars named Yellow, they've swapped positions. Ninth place for Jim, 10th place for Pure Racing Team. And you'd imagine that Jim Black Car is wanting to get that position as well to get both Jim cars into the top 10 here. But Connery, it's been a cracking race so far and got potential. Of a, of a showdown finish here. Yeah, very good potential as long as Kegashube can keep pulling these lap times out of the bag. Uh, so it's going to be a close run thing by the end. Uh, you know, if Kegashube can get himself there or not. But, uh, you know, we've heard from Justin Brunner in the chat part of that NX Racing team thinking that this isn't going to happen for them, so they're not entirely confident that uh, Sturgis can take, th take this race win. But uh, I, I've got to say, they are in the driving seat right now. It, you know, it's one thing for Keiko Shube to get up to the back of Sturgis. We're going to pull out the Murrayism in for one more time here, but it's going to be a completely other thing to try and get past. Joe, you know, I was reading in a, an article that was uh, online that was reminiscing about um, Still in Moss winning at the Mex I think it was Mexican Grand Prix, I believe it was. As uh, now we've got a battle for sixth and seventh going on here, and it's Massimo pulling out to Massacala, looking to the inside of that VRS Quantum spot car. And Thrustmaster Mavano red up into sixth place. But he, uh, everyone was, no, it was Argentinian Grand Prix. That was it. I knew it was in South, uh, somewhere in the Americas. But, uh, I was about to say, Mexico's not in South America. 
No, uh, uh, no, that's why I said Americas. Um, but you almost. No, I didn't. Uh, so uh, it was the Abyssinian Grand Prix back in the late 50s, and Sterling Moss was expecting to win the race unless they didn't take tyres in the race. Everyone else took tyres, and they imagined that the uh, you know the British driver would come through and take tyres, and uh, he didn't. He ended up winning the race. But he was having to drive down the grass to keep his car, his tyres cool enough to be able to make it to the end. And uh, round of date, just to give you an image, the front tyres were down to the canvas in that race. That was uh, how hard he was pushing those car, uh, those tyres in that race. We've seen a sort of similar position, not quite to the same extent, but we've seen a similar position here with that uh, Inex Racing blue car taking no tyre change here definitely been the situation. It was a 47.9 two laps ago for that NX car and Kate Kashubi has picked up the pace. Four tenths of a second is what he's taken out of that NX car the last two laps and now the gap is under three seconds. We have roughly 13 minutes so about seven laps eight laps still remains in this race and I think with about three laps to go if Kate Kashubi can continue reeling the gap in like that Kate Kashubi will start getting a hint of slipstream so I think we're going to be in for about two lap or so fight where that Mercedes from Team 33 is going to be in that draft and Kei Kashubi is going to be trying his hardest to get to Jake Sturgios who is still doing a fantastic job catching a bit of the curve coming out of the second chicane that cost him a little bit of time but Kei Kashubi is seeing that gap come down more and more and I'm sure is being pushed by his teams to go on come on reel that gap in as uh, well Kashubi he, he's got the bit between his teeth that's for sure through the second Lesmo he goes, a slight bit of damage on the uh, left hand side, I think that's from clattering these curbs here uh, at the chicanes, it will cause a little bit of damage there but um, yeah it certainly uh, isn't affecting them that's for sure as we're heading towards the Scarra chicane, 11 minutes remaining in this one, it was a three hour effectively a sprint race uh, for this championship here around Monza but it's always tricky, it's always challenging around this track to get the job done here but Kashube how important is it Connery that one he can see his competitor ahead but two his competitors got to get around lap traffic yeah Jake still just having to deal with the Audi there of uh, Carlos Diegues the Zenith high speed number 26 car gets itself well out of the way so that lets the next racing car uh, get itself by but uh, you're absolutely right there um, Paul uh, Team 33 Keiko Shube can now see uh, quite clearly Jake Stewart just a couple of seconds down the road and for some drivers that does act as a bit of a carrot on the stick they can see what they're chasing it's one thing to be you know chasing numbers be it fuel numbers or lap time numbers but as soon as you can see a competitor ahead of you you know that there's no more strategy to play out that's when some drivers really start to find another gear as we head into that final 10 minutes of the race then you can see that gap but now crucially that lap traffic is in between the two leaders here but you often find Randy that the leader has a little bit of a worse time getting past some lap traffic because the lap traffic suddenly gets woken up to the fact that there's faster cars coming through Potentially, however, that slipstream has helped Jake Sturgios a little bit because that Zenith car gave Jake a hint of draft, and because of that, Jake Sturgios able to do a 47.797, so a very quick lap when he tucked in behind that lime green Zenith Audi. Next in line is actually going to be the Bardal Sim Racing car driven by Nito Nascimento. That car is not very far up the road from Jake Sturgios either. It's important to keep in mind, though, that it's going to go the other way, and Kei Kashubi is now going to have a hint of slipstream from that Zenith high-speed machine and might be able to reel in Jake Sturgios just that little bit more because of it. But regardless, it's going to be about five laps remaining when we get to the line, and it's going to be very, very close. And lap traffic, even if they don't in, in, uh, intentionally uh, well, even if they don't get in the way or slow down the leader, they may still be a factor just with the slipstream here at Monza. Bear in mind, also look further back as well. The battle between fourth and fifth, there's just three tenths of a second between those two on track as we're heading towards the end here. Martin Solari and William Levesque, that's uh, Inex Racing Yellow and Jim Racing White, fourth and fifth between the two of them and Levesque is at the front of the fit of, of those two at the moment but his lap times have been slower than that Jim car and Jim in that slipstream Solari using the slipstream to his advantage across the timing line they go and uh, will he make a move in towards turn number one he'll pull out to the right here 
down towards the Retifilio once again. We're running out of laps in this one, running out of time on the brakes hard into that chicane. Gets the job done there. Jim Racing White up into fourth place overall in this race. That battle won't be over with, but you would imagine that Jim have just had the edge all the way through these last few laps to be able to get that uh, move done as, uh, well, eight minutes remaining in this one. Keiko Shube, two seconds. The back up is under two seconds, I should say. So those, those lead battle now, Connery, it's really coming to a head here can he get it done though it, i don't feel it's just quite close enough at this point he just needs to be that little bit closer here at this point in the race if there's one place where i've seen that mercedes gain a ton of time it's actually on the head on the braking zones especially coming down in towards turn number one he can just break so much later and so much better than uh, any of the cars that he's come up against i think the kegashube just has to use that as the weapon of choice once he gets back uh, onto the back bumper of sturgis even though he can't compete with him really in a straight line he can do it on the brakes down the inside do a daniel ricardo move as we go across the line again, let's check out the lap times. Jack Sturgios, a 47.9. Keg Shube, 47.5. So there's lap time. That gap is still just continuing to get closer here as they head onto the brakes once again for that first chicane. Four tenths taken out of that lap time, as you can see on screen. And uh, Randy. I, I'm rubbing my hands with glee. This is exactly what we wanted, and this is what we were hoping would happen towards the end of this race when we got to the end of that first that first stint. Yeah, I, I think this is exactly what we were all hoping for in terms of this tire strategy. I think we expected the player to be reeling in this NX car to be Vera's going to support number eight, but I'll take a Mercedes driven by exclusive Velcro Motorsports guys. They don't have a team yet, so they'll still represent that. I know there's still a lot of love for that team from that group. Just still waiting on the announcement of where those drivers actually went. But for Keiko Shubi, as he goes through that first Lesmo, they're going to head into the second. All these corners is where that Mercedes is going to be making up the ground. When will that NX car, though, catch Nito Nascimento because that's going to be a bit of a buff for that McLaren for a very short time. It'll give just that sort of little hint of extra speed that might be the difference maker. It should be about three laps left, I think, when we get to the line. If K can continue reeling this in at four tenths of a lap, he should be able to get there. It's going to all depend on when he can get the slipstream, though. There's been a change of position, by the way. Seventh place now for Dream Factory. So they've moved up a position uh, on VRS Quantum Sim Sport number one. You've got a change of position as well. Isaac Price and uh, Radicals. God, blimey, Isaac Price was leaping over the curbs there at the Della Rosia. He's uh, trying his best to just pull closer to that uh, pure racing team red trying to knock out the advantage that they've got there you've had battling further down with glacier as well they've been battling with thrustmaster mavano yellow they've changed positions on this last lap as well so changes all the way down this field looking at your leaders though 47 8 for jake sturgios 47 5 for the k kashube in that team 33 car Four minutes, 50, four minutes, 43 seconds, should I say, left remaining in this one. It's all coming to a head here, Connery, and he'll just be starting to feel the slightest of effect of that slipstream of the car in front. But crucial for Jake Sturgios. Yep, that's it. He's got the uh, lap traffic now between him and the uh, car of Team 33 here, Connery. Yeah, that was absolutely huge for Jake Sturgios because he couldn't afford that Bardal Sim Racing to still be ahead coming down into the Della Roja because uh, of the uh, amount of uh, pace that that Bardal Sim Racing car does not have will help, will hold up, would have hold up, uh, would have held up, sorry, uh, once I get my sentences right, uh, that in next racing blue car. But now uh, this is the case of King Shube. How, uh, you know, how quickly can he get past that Bardal Sim Racing car and then go on the hunt uh, for in in the dying moments of this race. We'll have two laps to go the next time we head our way across the line. And Bardell, they're not even going to let go to, of the back of V-Next here. They're going to stick out to the end as well. Yeah, they're wanting to uh, just get pulled forward because they are in a battle with the car behind Keiko Shube, don't forget. So they're involved in their own battle there, a Bardell and Vendable Sim Racing Yellow. But we're heading around the par Parabolica now. We're going to be starting the penultimate lap here. And you can see visibly the gap on the screen here. We don't really need to see the graphic, but we'll uh, be able to show you. Anyway, across the line, 47.8 for Jake Sturgeon. I think this is three to go. 
I think this is going to be three to go. Two to go on GRT. Two to, I would say two to go because we've got three minutes remaining in this race. And it's a minute 47 for a lap. So uh, Kashube needs to make his move on that car in front. That lap traffic, get by them and then make the move on Jake Sturgios as we're heading around Curva Grande once again, the penultimate time down towards the uh, Della Roggia and that part of that part of car doesn't move over there for Kei Kishube out the uh, Della Roggia now they move out the way now you've got the race battle between your front two cars we saw a close battle at Sebring between two cars for half an hour we've see, we're have seeing here how that Team 33 car has been just gaining on that set Inex Racing Blue car heading towards the Ascara chicane once again for the penultimate time here Connery what's your call who do you think is going to get this one done it's impossible to call at this stage, you know. Do you side with the defensive uh, drive of NX Racing Blue or do you trust in Kate Kashube's offensive capabilities? That gap down now to within nine tenths of a second, getting close to eight tenths of a second. Kate Kashube will be feeling the slipstream now from NX Racing Blue. I think he's going to be a bit too far back to make a move down in towards turn number one. So that may uh, be the deciding factor here, but uh, he, he nearly, really needs to go 150% out there on circuit right now white flag is going to be the air, in the air this time by as they come across the line it's going to be seven tenths of a second separating p1 p2 yeah minute 30 remaining is across the timing line there so you would imagine that that is going to be the final this is going to be the final lap of the race here you can see the gap getting closer and closer look at that mclaren spitting flames at the mercedes but it's having to break a lot earlier because of those ill older tires but look at this now, through into Curva Grande once again. It's all about the exit at that first chicane. Keg Shube set in front of him, looking to make that move. But Jake Sturgios, he's an experienced driver. They're all experienced drivers so in this series, but he's one of the most versatile drivers as Sturgios as a go through. Della Roggia once again into Lesmo 1. Kashube within seven tenths of a second. It's not close enough, you would imagine, at the moment. But now, look at the exit he got out of Lesmo 1, out of Lesmo 2. This is where he needs to carry the speed all the way down towards the Ascara chicane. And it's going to perhaps be a move into the Parabolica on the, the final corner of this race. In towards the Ascara chicane once again, Sturgios moving left, moving right, trying to hold on to that lead as we go through the Ascara chicane. There's 14 oh, seconds left. Oh. Jim, Ra Jim Racing, by the way, have had an accident with the Azuri lead, car. Lead, lead. But the lead battle here, look at this now. Jake Sturgios, really defensive driving. Kashube looking to the outside. He's going to try and make the move around the outside of the Parabolka. That's not going to work, but he's going to try and get the cut back here. Get the run out the Parabolka. That's beautifully done there by Kashube. There's a little bit of door banging as well as they go across the line. Is it going to be Team 33 across the line? Yes, it is. Team 33 across the line by 0 0.063 of a second over the uh, team of Inex Racing Blue. What a finish there across the line. Fantastic stuff. Keiko Shube just did enough there to get the win today here. As we look further down, Thrustmaster Mavano Red, they've been battling with Dream Factory. Dream Factory have been battling through the top 10. They've made it into sixth place in the end here in this race. But wow, what a finish there. Randy, you've got to take your hat off there to uh, Jake Sturgis to be able to do that on such old tyres. Uh, yeah, wonderfully done by Jake Sturgio through that entire stint. He needs to come out of here with his held, head held high. The closest finish, I think, in VRS slash Blanc Pond GT World Championship history. Six hundredths of a second decided it at the line. And I don't think the closest to that has been about a second or two between race leaders. So for Jake Sturgio, it was a fantastic race. But Kei Kashube, we hyped him up last season. He finally gets his first win. And that last lap, I thought that a mistake from Kei Kashube through the second chicane. He got a bit of oversteer after landing off the second chicane. Thought that was going to be the end of it. But Sturgio's got a big bite of oversteer through the Ascari chicane. And that's what potentially opened the door. And Kei Kashube, there was only a Mercedes car width door to the inside through the Parabolica. He went for it. A little bit of contact. But overall, that was clean. And because of that, 
this team. They repeat here at Monza. Second time we've seen this group win. Fantastic run. And Monza, I know a lot of the drivers complain that it's boring and that it's bad. They're just all a bunch of whiners. It produces, I think, the best racing for this series. Absolutely. And Connery, those tight. it was just, just that little bit too long for those tyres on that McLaren today. But uh, one heck of an effort there from that uh, NX Racing Blue car. It was a brilliant effort from, uh, from you know, Sturgis and Brunner, but wow, that move for Kiga Shube to be under that sort of pressure, to, for have, to have that gap open at just the last minute, it was expertly timed there by the ex Velcro Motorsports driver. He couldn't have timed that, that one any better, as I no doubt get, we're getting a couple of replays of that final move. The move wasn't on, the cutback move wasn't on, I thought. So he just was able to hold that inside line, but no, he just drifted up in the middle of the corner. Kegashube saw that, slot his car in, and drag race to the line, then he also won. Kegashube take a bow. Well, there we go. That's the uh, the end of this uh, virtual racing school GT World Championship race here. Round number three in the series. And let's take a look through your final results here. And well, it is Team 33. It shows us team on our graphics, but it's definitely Team 33 who get the win here today by, look at that. 0.063 of a second across the line from that Sima Cube Inex Racing Blue Trick Sergios. VRS Quanda Sim Spot, third place, a good podium position there for the number eight car with Jim Racing GTR Center White in fourth. Thrustmaster Mavano Red ended up in fifth place, only just though ahead of the Dream Factory who made a great comeback in that final stint to get sixth place. Simicube Inex Racing Yellow then was the next one. Started 27th and finished in 7th place. Great result for them today. Vieras Quanda Simsport number one in 8th. Jim Racing GTR Center Yellow in 9th. Jim Racing GTR Center Yellow. Uh, Center Black, sorry, in 10th place. Pure Racing Team Red, they started this one off in 10th place. They had an instant. They were spun round at the first corner. They were stunned death last at the end of the first lap. They've ended up finishing 11th, a brilliant drive for them to recover there. Pure Racing Team Yellow in 12th place with the F8 Racing G2 Logitech G car in 13th. 14th place for the SDK Apex Racing UK car with Radicals Online in 15th with the 17th car. TTL Esports disappointed day for them down in 16th with Vendevil Sim Racing White in 17th. Simicube Inex Racing Red, they had technical issues at the, in the first stint of the race, they're down in 18th with Pure Racing Team Black in 19th and Glacier North with a uh, three stop strategy rounding up the top 20. The rest of your results up on stream here but what an event it has been today don't go anywhere though because we will be having the post race show coming up here on iRacing live you have been watching the virtual racing school gt iRacing world championship series here on iRacing live brought to you by racebook tv what a breathtaking finish and hats off to team 33 getting the job done at the death of this race don't go anywhere we'll be right back
Team racing allows multiple iRacing members to team up and race together, just like in real world endurance series. Teammates can share driving duties, spot for one another, or be a crew chief. Team racing is free both to join a team and to create one. Each teammate races on his or her own computer from wherever they want to. Your teammates can be anywhere in the world and changing drivers mid-race is as easy as a click of a button. Our racing features team endurance events ranging from just a couple of hours to 24 hours in length. So, if you fancy taking part in an iRacing endurance race in the future, you can learn more about team racing on the Teams page on the member website. Well, we've caught our breath there and what an amazing finish to that uh, brilliant race there. Congratulations to Team 33 on the win there, as I say, by 0.63 of a second. You are welcome back to the Post Race Show here at the Virtual Racing School GTI Racing World Championship Series. Paul Smith here alongside me, Conrad Maddock and Randy Chenoff, Hugo Lewis uh, behind the cameras in the production truck and well, what a finish to the race there and uh, we're going to have a quick word with some of your drivers who are taking part in that and randy why don't we uh, take it away your race winner keiko shube well unstood by it with the driver that number team 33 car number 33 k what a run from you guys i have to ask the when it came down to the f pit stops did you have any hope that you would potentially be able to walk away with this at the second stop, or do you think it was going to be Coanda and NX out in front? Oh, yeah, <laughs> it was an exciting race. Uh, I, I have to say, after the stop, I was a bit concerned because uh, yeah, tire wear is not one of the strengths of the Mercedes, but we were helped a lot by the weather, I think. So the car worked worked nicely. And yeah, also, INX went for three stints on one tire set. So yeah, we, of course we were hoping. We were, we didn't know exactly if the fuel will be enough. So I had to do a, a bit of saving and catching up at the same time. So yeah, and then to have a pass at the last corner, is really <laughs> it was really intense. Yeah. Now talking about that strategy, you know, one of, one of the things that I think when we get to the post race show, I'm going to talk about is that Vieira's Quinta Sinsport number eight car. A lot of people are hyping up the way that Mitchell and Mac drove, but uh, if I'm honest, that number eight car has got, been on the wrong side of strategy for basically the past season. Uh, you know, think back to the Spa six hour race last year, Sebring, they'd made the same mistake, and I think they did it to themselves here. Then you had NX, who sort of went the, uh, the exact opposite route, went basically no tires the entire race, or I'd which I don't think anyone thought would have worked uh, when things first started. So what's your opinion on the strategies? You guys, have, I know, went the same route as Coanda, but you had much more impressive uh, pace at the end of stint. Why do you think that is? Uh, yeah, I, I, I have to say I was really surprised about that. I thought Mac would pass me in no time. Um, yeah, basically because we, we were always bad in the second stints in the, in the last races. Um, yeah, so as I said, the weather helped a lot. And I think maybe, yeah, of course, the, the balance of performance uh, plays a role as well. But yeah, there's a lot of talking about that. I won't go into that um, because, yeah, I think you have to take the chance when you got it. I think we have had a had a good setup. We had a good car. We we were competitive and we took the chance. And that's all I can say, really. Now, talking about that group, there's since the mass exodus for, exodus for you guys from Husingfeld Core Motorsports, there's been a lot of rumblings about where you guys are going. Is there any uh, is there any sort of inclination? Can you give any hint about where you lot have gone? I figured that you guys would have come out a bit with an announcement by now. Figure, uh, you know, you guys have just missed the whole marketing gig of if you had announced it a week ago, you come in, get a big win in your first race with the new team. What's taking so long? <laughs> Yeah, we thought so as well. I have to say, um, yeah, it's a bit uh, that that didn't go as planned, but that doesn't mean that we that we have no options now. I think we have a good future ahead of us. But 
uh, I cannot I cannot talk about this, but it's it will be exciting. It would have been nice to announce it beforehand, but yeah, time just ran out for us. And yeah, but I think we can do well in the future in future races as well. And yeah. Congratulations, Kay, on the big win. I know we hyped you up last season, and I know you guys went with the Mercedes last year. It didn't quite work out. The BOP was absolutely terrible, and there's been some complaints from people that definitely benefited from the BOP last season. But this season's BOP, so that's pretty funny. So uh, before we let you go, any shout-outs, any plugs? Who gets it done for you at insert team name here? Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you to Alex. He did a great job. He qualified well. He did a great first stint. Um, to our all team, we are still still together, obviously. And um, yeah, also congrats to Inex and Kuana. It was a nice race. Thank you to you guys. And yeah, I hope we can go on similarly. Well, there's your race winner, Kei Kashubi, Paul. Yeah, well done to uh, Kay for that one. And well, I know uh, Randy will be out. Not Randy, Connery. Good grief. It's I'm been doing all the work. No, it's Connery that's going to take this, this interview. It's with your third place finish team team VRS Quanda Simspot, Matt Backham, and Mitchell De Young. Yeah, once we get those guys in here, we'll be able to uh, talk a little bit with the with the Quanda drivers here. And uh, we'll, we'll go first to you, Mac. And uh, well, uh, that race, uh, that, that that seemed to be a rather comfortable one for you, even though you finished 12 seconds off the lead. Uh, but finally, it is a good result, even though, you know, considering the fact that you had uh, not the greatest first two races of the season. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the result, I must say. It, it kind of feels like a win. I, it's, like the Audi was just not um, up to the speed with the, some of the other cars today, I feel. Uh, so I'm really happy we finished third. We gained a lot of points on uh, people in front of us in the championship. And just looking at uh, where we were in the first two races team-wise, uh, I think we've like really come along with the setup, and I think we can really, uh, yeah, put a lot better results in uh, in the future. Yeah, exactly. Is uh, we, we do have a rather heated discussion, shall we say? I think is the biggest understatement that I've ever made. Uh, currently going on rounds about the uh, the balance of performance, uh, you know, in, in the chat there, but. Um, uh, what, what is your, your own opinion on this? I don't think I've seen you say anything uh, in regards to that topic, but uh, you know, c can we judge this version of balanced performance on a track such as Monza, which usually throws up these odd races anyway? Shouldn't we wait until perhaps next race to form a, uh, a better opinion? Well, we're, we're getting the BOP on a track-by-track -track basis, and I think at least for this track, the BOP was completely wrong. I think everyone... Um, knew the McLaren was going to be super strong. It was super strong here for us in preseason testing. Um, the Mercedes was kind of an unknown because I haven't really driven that since it got all those updates, but it looked very good today. And I, I just think the weight added to the Audi uh, for this race was completely unnecessary. Uh, if anything, I would say the McLaren needed a bit of weight. Uh, I think just seeing the Audis that were up front in qualifying, like Mitchell, Ricardo, I just speak. I think that speaks testament to how good uh, a lot of the Audi drivers are this season. Yeah, I did say I you know I got news of the uh, of the ballast uh, you know before the race and saw 40 kilograms for the Audi and I thought that does sound like a bit much I will admit so I will disagree uh, with Randy there that the balance of performance is okay but um, uh, in terms of the rest of the season now now you've got yourself up and running uh, in that Coanda car uh, you know you've got the the races in the future you've got the Nurburgring coming up which is going to be a big race for you guys so how are you looking for those sorts of races? Yeah, well, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I hope <laughs> I hope we don't get extra kilos on the Audi again. Uh, I think the Nürburgring in general is um, probably a, str a stronger track for the Audi than Monza is anyway. Um, and I'm not even sure what uh, tracks are after that. But yeah, I, we'll, we'll always just do our best and obviously try to come out uh, as the first Audi. And if we so happen to also be able to win uh, in the Audi, then of course we're going for the win. Yeah, it was a good result for you guys considering. And uh, we also do have Mitchell de Jong here uh, as well in the commentary booth taking, uh, you know, those those first two stints uh, for the VRS car and the SimSport number eight car. And, uh, well, how are your stints, Mitchell? They were quite okay, I think. Um, the qualifying lap was pretty okay. I had a bit of a mistake in um, the first chicane on my lap and... Um, other 10th loss a bit later on so uh, we could have done a little bit better in in qualifying but uh, I I think we definitely didn't really expect to 
even start fourth. Um, that as well with the start, it really worked out for us to get into P2 right away and basically just be able to follow NX Blue in, um, in their draft and kind of get to our, our fuel target and uh, try to build a little bit of a gap to uh, the cars behind. So um, it was pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, a little bit different strategy, of course. Um, so we had to kind of come through the field a bit again. And I think we were kind of expecting and very hopeful that uh, looking good on the final stint, but uh, we definitely didn't um, anticipate uh, NX Blue to, to triple stint there. So, uh, yeah, I think overall, like Max said, this is much like a win for, for an Audi here. So it was uh, a great race, I think. Speaking of the strategy, and it was a very, very strategic race uh, today at Monza. It, um, w were you expecting so many people to go on to the uh, on onto, you know, the, the triple stint strategy? Uh, I think we were expecting, I, I know for sure, everyone in the commentary booth was expecting, okay, we'll see double, stint the t double stinting the tires, and that's probably about it. But uh, I think a couple of factors played into this uh, to mean that some drivers could, or rather quite a few teams actually, could triple stint the tyres. It's because the track temperature was quite cold. So was the triple stint strategy on the cards for Coanda at any point? But, or did you just go into this race thinking, this is what we're going to do and we're going to execute it like this? Well, it's always quite difficult. Um, I, I think for all the Audis, pretty much uh, just double stint was pretty much the max we, max we could do. Um, uh, the wear and the way the car reacts to the cliff and everything just was not beneficial at all um so compared to the other cars it's quite difficult to say without really knowing um you know how how testing is and um i don't think any of us really expected that but uh you know it was really really cold so things like this can happen but um yeah i i think we kind of wrote it off especially uh after bathurst when we when we tried it a different track of course and um situation but um, it, it, I don't think it was available for any of the Audis at all today, so uh, I think it was more of uh, something that just works for a, a few select ones. Yeah, I think that's what we saw. So uh, is there anyone else uh, you want to thank? Anyone who works behind the scenes at Coanda there to make sure you guys get these the decent results? Yeah, of course. Um, big thanks to everyone in the team, uh, everyone that was driving and um, preparing behind the scenes that even didn't race. Uh, Obviously, we had a really difficult start to the season, and um, everyone's kind of pulling together nicely, trying to get things figured out. Uh, so, yeah, big thanks to everyone there. Um, Mac did an awesome job. Uh, big thanks to him. Uh, and, of course, our spotters, uh, Philip especially, and uh, also Dave was there helping out a lot, um, even though he didn't race. And, uh, yeah, all our partners, Virtual Racing School, Hoisingfeld, and Warren Design, Simquip, uh, dual real timing and of course you guys race spot for uh yeah putting this on for us well that was mitchell de young and of course a little bit earlier on mac Ackham for that vrs kind of sim sport number eight car p number three for them when all is said and done paul yeah absolutely we'll just get to a chance to have a quick word with pj sturgios from the Unix racing yellow car and randy is standing by with him i'm stood by with pj from Unix racing yellow i believe the third highest bmw at the end of this one pj bop was certainly interesting you guys in the bmw looked quick how was it from your perspective yeah that was uh pretty unexpected to uh come into monza with the bmw and be able to pull off a top 10 like that but uh, definitely happy with that kind of result after starting back there in uh 27th and but dodging that first lap wreck and missing that really kind of helped us get a good start off to the race, um, which we probably, looking back, we probably could have changed up our strategy to take tires on the first stop, and I think we would have, might have had a little bit for the uh, gym racing guys and the Movano guys there at the end, but, you know, all in all, P7 is good, uh, is good for the championship after uh, kind of what happened at Sebring. Now, talking about um, this race, the weather was somewhat interesting. We saw a lot of people. I mean, I, I know your teammates in the NX Blue Car, they were sort of joking about it at the at the start of the race, triple stint on tires incoming, and then they, they actually did it. The absolute madmen 
was it something you guys were considering or you know I know it's one of these things that a lot of the, even the top drivers they sort of put the blinders on in terms of the strategy it happened with Coanda in season one. Oh, you can never double stint tires Coanda then rewrites the book on your strat on the way strategy works and it seemed to sort of work uh, here as well what sort of was the opinion coming in and does it sort of affect your sort of opinion on what strategy should look like coming away from this race yeah going into that i think uh we were definitely planning on double stinting if it was cooler track temps like it was in here but the triple stint uh we kind of looked at the, at the data and what kind of pace we had to run if we were on new tires for both us and blue team and uh the new tire pace would have been so fast that we pretty much would have had to run on qualifying laps every lap without making any mistakes for it to work so we went with a strategy with a gamble there i know it's usually easier to defend than try to come through the field and pass a bunch of cars because that increases your risk of uh, getting in an incident. So uh, looking back, I can't, it's hard to say what the right strategy was here. I guess we'll have to kind of review the notes, review the times, and see if we really made the right call here. But, I mean, all in all, uh, second place for the blue team. That was really good for them. They started up there on the pole, uh, which I guess is kind of expected for the McLaren at this track. But, you know, uh, they, they, they knew in the uh, blue team that they had to run well this week in order to uh, get some good points for the championship. So finishing second isn't too bad, but hats off to Kay and Alex there. Those guys ran an awesome race as always, and uh, nice, really nice move by Kay there on the last lap to get Jake by, by just six hundredths of a second. So, I mean, three hours of racing, and it comes down to that. It's hard to be too upset about it, but it certainly is disappointing to lose it there in the last lap. I think all of us in uh, Discord were... Really, really uh, nervous there watching that last bit of the race, but it was it was exciting and hopefully the, the fans enjoyed it. And uh, while I'm here, I always want also want to give a shout out to uh, SimLab, I, uh, V Racing, uh, all the guys at NX Racing, and SimuCube for their support this year. Uh, it's been great having them be partnered with us. Uh, it's great, great products for if you're looking for a controller for your direct drive wheel. Uh, if you're doing one of the DIY kits, it's really Really nice software to use and something to for you guys to look into. So uh, really kind of looking forward to here to our Nürburgring in another month. It's going to be an exciting one. Well, I was going to do the sponsor plugs next, but you've already taken that one, care of that one. So congratulations, PJ, on the good finish. You guys did very well on that BMW. Good luck to the six-hour race at the Norch Life. Thanks, Randy. Well, not at the Norch Life, at the Nürburgring. <laughs> I wish it was a Norch Life. Yeah, I think we all do. But, uh... Paul, that's, I think, all the interviews we have, so back over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, well, we're almost out of time, but just quickly, final thoughts, Conry, what an amazing finish to that race. Yeah, exactly, and I'm, uh, you know, absolutely ecstatic that we managed to get that final lap battle uh, right at the dying moments there, and to top it off a final lap pass, you, you, can't, you can't really ask for a much better finish at all. And Randy, final thoughts. It wasn't just at the front that there was that close battle. We had the close finishes all the way through your top 10. Yeah, close finishes up and down the field. It was definitely a very good race, and uh, it's, it's great seeing the different manufacturers be able to be competitive. I also want to say, just looking to the next race, I'm, I'm expecting a little bit more from that Virus Quintus Sport number 8 car. I think we've sort of seen the three races in a row now. The strategy really go the wrong way. They've been on the wrong foot, and you know we've got to think back to about the Spa race last season. I think for better part of a whole season they've been on the wrong term of the strategy they've had the speed and they've just, just i think the decision making in terms of when to do the tire swap and when not to do the tire swap hasn't been there and i think it's been hurting that group well thank you very much thank you to connery medic and randy chenna thank you also to hugo lewis who is behind the cameras and the graphics for today I want to give a quick mention to istvan bello track cams 22.com if you want to get track cameras like we have here on racebot tv the overlay design is by andreas werner of and Wern designs the development of the uh, graphics was brought to you by simon grossman from appgineering.com who pr pr provides us with the atvo product and live timing is brought on Racebot TV by Nick Thiessen. So thank you very much to those guys. And uh, well, what a race. We're three races into the series now. We head on over to the Nürburgring Grand Prix track uh, for what should be an enticing, exciting battle as we go on throughout this series. I've been Paul Smith here. This has been a Racebot TV production for iRacing Live. And we'll see you next time. 
in the VRS GT iRacing World Championship Series. Goodbye.